Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilt life, Insomniac Quilting Series, episode 33. I'm kind of like in one of those moods. Um, I kind of don't feel good. I'm hurting really bad thanks to MS and all my other problems. But I figured I would come on and make a quilt. If I can even make a whole quilt in a quick Insomniac video. <laughs> Hi Sandy. I'm okay. I just feel like caca. If that means anything. <laughs> so I'm going to put the um, tablet so I can see comments like literally right here in front of me while I do this. <clears throat> so my son Cyrus wants a quilt and he chose his color palette here and I'm just gonna make something simple with it because he says he doesn't want anything rant. He doesn't want anything uh, that takes a long time. He wants something simple. I tried to get him to help. Nope, I tried to get him to come in and maybe just iron for me or something simple, but no, he doesn't want to help. So he's gonna get something super simple, <laughs> super easy because he doesn't want to help me. So I'm just gonna do what I do best and so and not give a crap how it's going to turn out because <laughs> you know he doesn't care so why should i right <laughs> so anyways um if you're new to my channel head down there hit that subscribe and ring the bell get notifications when i'm live like my videos share them all that stuff um insomniac videos are always after 10 p.m whenever i feel like coming on and tonight i just felt like coming on so um i actually have you guys on the rear facing camera not the front facing tonight so my screen to see will be the screen in front of me on the ipad so i actually won't even be able to tell if the phone is going to die maybe i should plug that in before i get started just in case that way it does not die in case i like go over my time i'm gonna like make sure it is good. Awesome. Okay, so make sure that's nice and straight. Try not to trip over any cords. And I decided, okay, so here's his main fabric. And it's all sorts of colors, like just random. Okay, and then the color he chose is this color. And I forgot the name of it. It's a dark navy blue called, hold on two seconds, it is called Ink, I-N-K, like pen ink. That is the name of this blue color. These were originally 10 inch squares, but they shrunk being laundered, so now they are nine and a half. They are all trimmed. I trimmed them months ago now, and these I just cut, you know, uh, 10 minutes ago or so. These are now nine and a half inch. I was originally going to make a really big, huge half square triangle, but I don't feel like folding all these in half to make a crease down the center to sew on each side. So I have decided I'm going to make four half square triangles out of all these. So I'm just going to go ahead and take one of these squares, one of these squares, and put them right side together and I'm gonna sew all the way around it and I'm just gonna do this whole entire pile by I'm not even chain piecing oh I should chain piece probably I could chain piece one whole side chain piece another whole side I guess I don't know I think I'm just gonna do all four sides grab another two pieces do all four sides and so on so I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam I'm also going to adjust this so that I can use my knee lift as needed. I am using white thread instead of um, instead of a dark blue because I don't feel like digging through the drawer to grab the dark blue. I do have dark blue or else I would have been sewing with the dark blue, but some of these in here are light so I, I don't want to use a dark thread with some of the light ones so i'm just gonna go all the way around 
for the quarter inch seam. Hi, Tammy. Let's see. No, you will do your best. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm going to try to do my best, Sandy. Tammy. Oh, you're starting on CJ's. Yes. Hi, Teresa. What are you doing awake, woman? Quilting for the soul is here. Hi. And yes, today would have been nice. How was your day? I had one of those days where I just wanted to stay in bed. The baby. I shouldn't call her a baby anymore. She's three. And she was having tummy troubles, so I laid her on my chest, and she cuddled up to me, and I was rubbing her back to help the tummy troubles ease, because that actually helps with little ones, and uh, she fell asleep. And asleep, then asleep, then asleep. So she laid on me for over two hours asleep, and I couldn't move because she would freak out if I moved, so I just stayed there. So that kind of made my back hurt kind of made my head hurt because I was kind of stuck in this like awkward position to make her comfortable and yeah well anyway she slept for a while and I was just stuck up watching TV while she slept but that's okay her tummy troubles eased and that's the good thing So I just sewed around all four corners and I'm just going to make a stack in front of me of all the pieces that I do this to and I'm just going to keep sewing and sewing and sewing until every single piece <laughs> has a blue piece. The, the part that he did do is he counted how many pieces there were and he counted how many blue pieces there were to make sure I had enough of both. So I actually cut uh, he had 51 pieces, so I cut um, 3.43 yards. <laughs> if, if you want to know, it's three and a half yards um, of nine and a half inch squares to make 51 squares. And that's if his counting is correct. And for those that are new, if you see me looking this way, it's because the screen is in front of me. Sandy mm. hope so. That was so sweet of you to take care of the child. Well, she needed comfort since she was not feeling so well. Sometimes the babies have tummy trouble, and Tiffy is there for a, a whole body to lean on. here would work with 10 inch squares as well. These are nine and a half because they were 10 inch and then I just cut nine and a half inch squares to go with it. So 51 pieces to do. And I'm just making sure they're lined up. I have no mark. I have a white like uh, Taylor's chalk pencil. But he wanted simplistic so I'm not going to sit and mark all of the pieces. So I'm just doing it this way. The least he could have done is come in here and stack them together for me. But that's okay. I shall conquer and get it done. No sewing for me today, but I'm ready to start free motion quilting on my niece's quilt tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah, this is my first time sewing today too, so don't feel bad. I didn't really do anything today either. You guys know I love this so much, but sometimes I just need a break.
so how is everybody doing tonight? Everybody in their pajamas hanging out with me. Going back to bed. Good night. Good night, Teresa. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Get some sleep, woman. It's probably like the easiest thing I can do here. Making half square triangles the easy way. Four at a time. I really should have just told him he has to help stack these for me. <laughs> That probably would have made this job go faster. I would have said, you don't have to do anything else but stack. And really, some of these colors match with the blue, but most don't. And this is what he chose. So this is what he's gonna get. Is anyone joining Lisa Marie's swap coming up soon? I just found out about her on Facebook. Lisa Marie, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. I started quilting and my grandson wanted me to drive him around. We got on lockdown Monday. I'm at it, but it'll be fine. Our town had its first um, case, and then our county actually had the second case come up. So we're on total lockdown, I guess is what it's called, too. I mean, businesses are still open, but they're only serving food um, via drive through and or pickup or delivery. And then the rest of everything is shut down. Because they don't know who that person has come in contact with. Or persons, plural, but one in our city. I don't know. I'm just doing my thing. I don't mind staying indoors because I'm always indoors. I never leave home. Although I do have reasons to leave home in a couple weeks. That's to go to the doctors. So really, I'm not leaving home. Like all my doctor's appointments have been canceled unless I absolutely need to see the doctor. And then most of that's either via phone call or I can face chat with my doctor, which is, I guess, okay. And the kids are out of school now. It's been implemented for them to be out of school until the 10th of April. And that's, that's not an exact number. They might change it. So my email has been bombarded with teachers emailing me all the stuff that the kids need to do for schoolwork. Well, Maxine and CJ wise. Because those are the only two in school. And most of the stuff CJ is going to have to actually pick up from the school because we don't have a printer and we don't have like my computer's okay. But some of the things he can't do on the computer because you got to print it up. So he's just going to have to go to school and pick up packets. We have no cases here in Maryland. But they have you on lockdown, Sandy? That's weird. Well, I guess everybody in the country is actually supposed to be staying indoors as best as possible. 
unless you're a hospital worker or a food worker or a grocery store or anything like that. And that's per Donald Trump saying that stuff. I guess they're urging the country to stay inside. Anybody else working on quilts? I kind of really don't want to talk about the coronavirus because it's just frustrating. I don't know. I mean, it, the only thing that affects me is the fact that if I get sick, I die. So... As long as I stay inside and don't hang out with anyone and don't talk to no one, then I should be fine. I meant in person. With you guys, it's okay because we're like distances apart. <laughs> so, is anybody working on anything fun? If you're in the group, don't forget to post it in the group for me to see. I like seeing pictures. If you're new to my channel, the group is in the description below. It's the second thing. First says my email, and then the next is come join us in the quilting group. And if you're just joining, I'm making a quilt for my son using nine and a half inch squares. two squares together like that and I just sew all the way around all four sides and I will cut them when I get to it and these prints are so pretty they're almost mainly this flowery print like this with the leaves and then the other ones are like a camo type print so and then it's a mixture of colors too so I like this so it'll definitely be or make for an interesting quilt very simple and then he's just gonna he said he just wants to throw a sheet on the back so he'll choose one of my sheets from my sheet pile depending on how big this turns out and then um, I'm hoping that he'll quilt it himself because it's really not that hard I mean all he has to do is move the machine around and bam done but We'll see. It depends. Okay, the governor one is okay, done it. I'll be able to take Rick back and forth to work. I think the last here was 170 plus. 170 plus what? People with the problem? Uh, working on two quilts. And Tammy, did you end up quilting your giant Dresden? No, I actually haven't gone any further with it. It's been sitting over in a pile. I could have brought it out, but I kind of want to get this done. Um, and out of the way so that he stops begging because <laughs> I hear it all the time I'm in here he's like mom you gonna make my quilt mom you gonna make my quilt he says but all the other kids have more than one quilt I want more than one quilt I think what it is is he wants something he can use in the summer his other quilt has um, thick cotton in it and it's also like the batting and then the uh, backing is a thick flannel. So it's winter time only. He wants something that he can use in the summer. So if I make it with uh, a sheet, it'll be a lot more breathable and thinner for him. Plus the last one, he didn't get to choose his colors. It was just a gift that I made for him. This one. 
one he got to choose, just like Maxine chose the one that's hanging on the wall here, which she doesn't have at her house. It's still here, but... But he keeps saying, I make so many quilts that nobody's buying. Might as well make something for the family, which is true. Nobody's buying the other quilts, so I might as well make something that can be used instead of sitting in a shelf. Stacking up. I have so many quilts, so many quilts. I need to sell them all. So that I can make so many more. the same she always asks for a quilt which i have made her a jean rag quilt and a crochet blanket she is obsessed <laughs> i know my my oldest daughter she started stuff she has stuff to make quilts here and she started one and sometimes i get bored and i'm thinking maybe i should work on it for her but i'm like no it's her project tiffany don't do it stay away <laughs> I do have to finish customer projects, but um, some of the fabric stores are closed. So ordering online is really hard because the fabric that one of the fabrics that I'm looking for, you can't tell on the screen and the description isn't enough for me. I need something that I already have and I cannot find it. So yeah. I'm like debating on where to look and then I got to find bathing fabric for another um, another customer quilt needs backing fabric so and I like to see feel touch you know so that's what stopped me from buying it already okay that's right side up gotta make sure I'm sewing these the correct way I'm obsessed with quilts too. I have a lot of my own now. I have four quilts that I have made. Um, three of them are for me to swap around with on my bed. One was intentionally supposed to be for the couch, but it doesn't end up on the couch ever because then it just gets dragged around and I don't want it to get torn up. If that makes sense. I don't want it to get ruined. All that work. So it kind of just goes on my bed when I feel like it because this is a thinner one. And then my big diamond quilt is a thicker one. And then my um, just squares that I was practicing free motion quilting designs, that one's in between. So that one can be used in the summer or winter. So it's like uh, I have three of my own. I made Scott one. And then the fourth one is just an around the house one. Feel like grabbing it grab it but it's for smaller sized people like children <laughs> so i don't need to make any more for us although that's what half of the quilts i make end up for And or they're all stacked in a cupboard in my room. These all should line up perfectly because they are all the same exact size. I cut them all myself, so they better be the same exact size. Hey, Kim. Uh, the one fabric store we have, she is wanting, 
Let me go by phone the shop instead of showing up. Oh, to phone before you come. I went to my local quilt shop the other day, but I only needed thread. And um, I don't think they're really doing classes or anything because nobody was there. Uh, I'm trying to be really good and not shop online because my husband says I overspend. <laughs> Kim, I am making my son's quilt. The, you know, CJ, Cyrus, he should be making his own, but I got him to count the pieces and make sure that I had enough. And he finally chose his background color. And he doesn't care what I do as long as it's simple and easy. He doesn't want a complex quilt. Like, the one he has is a... Um, Hold on, it'll come to me. Um, I gotta think about this. <laughs> it's like shadow boxes, uh, but it was the Missouri Star quilt one. Um, it wasn't shadow boxes. Oh my goodness. Whatever it is, it's that's what I made them. <laughs> They're just like floating boxes. That's what I had made them. Which is not really complex either. He just doesn't want anything complex, so I'm making half square triangles. And I'm going to throw them together somehow, some way. But I'm just going to be sewing around all four corners. Until all of these are ready to be cut. <laughs> So that's pretty much all I'm doing is sewing and sewing and sewing. Yeah, my video if I'm going to go to bed. Good night, everyone. I hope you sleep good. All right, good night, Sandy. Uh, my daughter has bought me $500 in fabric. Joanne had a sale for them this month. Ooh, that's a lot of fabric. Uh, Kim's working on her churn dash. And they're all saying good night. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, you guys saw I finished the churn dash quilt. It just needs to be bound, which I didn't feel like binding tonight. That's why I'm doing this instead. I was, oops, I shouldn't have done that. I was thinking about binding it in, uh, I think I have, hold on, let me look just to be sure that I'm saying the right thing. I have the pink and the green um, polka dot color that I used in it left. I don't have any more of the blue, I don't think. Let me look on the shelf. I can't tell from here. It doesn't look like I have any more of that blue color. I think I ran out of the blue, but I do have the pink and the green. So I was thinking about just using those as the binding, but then I could also use the backing fabric as the binding because I have a lot of it left. <laughs> But then I could also use this to make bags or something. So I don't know. I still have to make a tag for it anyway. And I don't feel like fussing with the brother because it's kind of buried over there in the corner. <laughs> I love this color. It's like a pink with like a magenta -y, purpley color in it. Very, very pretty. And surprisingly, Cyrus likes it. He likes the color purple, surprisingly. Not like a pastel purple, though. He likes deep, dark purple. And if I would have had a deep dark purple, that's probably what he would have chose as the background fabric instead of this uh, ink color blue.
week here. The weather was amazing. Lots of days in the backyard. It's been nice here, surprisingly. It was windy today. Ooh, we was it windy. And yesterday, too, sort of for half the day. As you guys know, I actually like being outside. I spend a lot of time outside. And not just to go out there to smoke, I go out there to hang out, you know, kids, so on and so forth. I love being outside. I'm an outdoors girl. And if my body could handle camping and stuff, I'd probably do that too. I like to go shooting. And that's outdoorsy. I used to like hiking, but I really can't hike anymore. Does everybody here have enough fabric stash to last during this whole stay in your house thing? Or are you guys all using it up? <laughs> wow, my stack is getting pretty big so far. See, that's how many I've done so far. It's a pretty big stack. Pretty big indeed. Trying to get my fabric stash. Okay, saw that. Oh, okay. Yes, but no batting. <laughs> you need to buy a big, huge roll and have it sent to your house. Then, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, my stash rivals Joanne's. <gasps> no batting, but I'm making tops to finish later. I have lots of tops to finish, but I don't have enough. Uh, some of them I want to be quilt show quilts, so that's why I haven't done anything with them, and I need a specific batting, like 108. And some of them are so big that I do need 108 because they're already like 100, and, uh, one of them is 107 wide by 114 or 16 long. So 108 is not going to work because, you know what I mean, it's too tight, too, uh, yeah, <laughs> having a half inch on each side is not going to work. And then um, the rest of them are also big, like one, two, three of them. Three of them are really big and they they will require 108 also. And a king size sheet is not gonna work <laughs> because it's not that big. King size sheets do queen size um, quilt. For those that are curious. And, uh, queen size does a full, full size does a twin, and twins do 
laps of babies. Just for future knowledge for those of you who like to back your quilts with sheets, like me. You know what's cool about these all being cut the same size from layer cakes? Well, for at least these parts right here. Um, there's no pinked edges. So everything's lining up perfect now. I have to follow either one size or the other. And when I cut all these down, they're going to be exact. <laughs> Which is good. Hi, Pamela. Uh... Sarah has batting, you know, we've been one project wonder, but at the very moment I have three on the go. <laughs> it's all this indoor days, yeah. I did me are those going to be half square triangles? Yes, Pamela, these are going to be half square triangles. This is for my son's quilt. He didn't want something complicated. He wanted simple, so making him a quilt that uses half square triangles, and I'll just lay them out however, he won't care. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything fancy. I might even scribble quilt it. If he doesn't quilt it, I'll scribble quilt it. Or I'll quote words in it like stay in school, go to college, get a job, be a good kid, listen to your parents. I could do all that in cursive on the long arm. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Secret messages. Well, this stack is getting smaller and smaller and the other one is getting bigger and bigger. It's wonderful. It's going so quick. gonna have a lot of my hair in this one. Good idea about the messages in the quilt. Wouldn't that be so cool? Just cursive writing, sentence after sentence. I think that would be awesome. Or maybe just inspirational quotes. I can open up a book and get a bunch of inspirational quotes and quilt them in. Two of my quilts um, that are mine actually have one I quilted my last name into in bubble writing. And then the other, I quilted love and our last name. That was for Scott. And then, wait, I did another one, a recent customer quilt that has, oh, my mom's, I put I love you in it. Um, and a customer one I wrote faith, love, joy, or something like that. I could put cursive writing, though, in quotes. And then when Triana did her Mother's Day quote thing uh, last year, her table runner, which was cut out of her playing on the long arm, it was cut out, and we turned it into a little table runner. Um, that says, I love you, Mom, and stuff like that. In it. And we did that here on this machine.
Oh, now I'm getting to the camo type fabric. Means I am halfway through this stack because I think there was an equal amount of both. So do you guys all, uh, does any of you watch um, So Yeah Quilting out of curiosity? Yesterday, I was on their uh, live stream, and obviously they mentioned my channel, and uh, so I figured I would do the same. So if you guys don't know, so yeah, quilting, they're based out of Las Vegas. They are actually a quilt shop, and there's two guys, and they come on, and uh, they make projects. And they did a face mask since the face mask thing. They are now starting live streams on Saturdays. At, I think it's 6 p.m., which would be the same time as me. My time, my uh, time, the Pacific time, Mountain Standard Pacific. I don't know. I guess it's Pacific time. Yeah. Anyway, so they're starting live streams, and they're pretty fun to hang out with. Um, if you guys are interested, it's two dudes. So... It's really cool when there's men out there that quilt. And then um, also Rob Appel with uh, Michael Miller Fabrics. He's actually been doing live streams the last couple days. So you guys might want to check him out as well. It's uh, making it fun um, just for, for new channels to watch for you guys if you want. So that would be So Yeah Quilting. Or it's just called So Yeah, S-E-W-Y-E-A-H. And then the other one is Making It Fun with Rob Appel. Um, if you guys want to catch, I've been watching their live stream, so you guys will see me there as well. I don't know if I catch all of them, but I've been trying to. So, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> I'm like you guys. I'm on it all the time watching the things that I like to watch too, which is men quilters trying to get my husband to want to do this. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, look what these guys are doing. And he's like, oh. He looks at me like, men aren't supposed to quilt. I'm like, yeah, they can. <laughs> so I guess the more I throw it in his face that men are on YouTube making quilt videos, the more maybe he'll come in here and sit and actually make something with me. Even, even if it's just him sewing a block, you know? I'm trying to get it, you know? So you guys want to check them out? tomorrow at six for so yeah and i don't remember if rob said he was going to go on again um he just came on today so i don't know what he's doing tomorrow but he's doing a lot of live streams because the whole stay home thing so you guys might want to go check him out i do not spell it so yeah thank you um kim for putting that on uh, I like Rob's channel. I also watch Rob. My boyfriend makes... Oh, I know that, Kim. <laughs> I wish Scott would, though. It would be nice if Scott did. And look, <laughs> I ran out of thread right at the end. Do you see that? <laughs> Well, I got a pretty big stack going. Two more rolled bobbins here. The sucky part about making this is um, 
I'm too tired in the legs and weak to lay this out on the floor. So I think I'm going to lay it out in like six or nine patches or something and then put them together because triangles, that's where triangles are very versatile. So hopefully I'll be able to just sit and sew um, and not have to lay much out because unfortunately my body is just aching too much to crawl around on the floor. So if I can lay something out up here, then I think that's what I'm going to do lay things out up here and if you guys see me hiccup it's because I keep getting the hiccups lately like a lot sorry I have a really really uh, big tuck right there I don't like tucks I don't want it to change the size of my blocks either because I actually don't know what's, I think they're going to come out five and a half inches because they're six inches if you use 10 inch squares. So I think it would be five or five and a half inch squares. Doing it this way. Are you doing pinwheel? No, I'm not going to do pinwheels. I don't, I don't want to do pinwheels. I'm thinking something else. Like, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't even know how many blocks I'm going to end up with. I'm going to get four per each of these. There's 51 blocks. There's 51 of these total, matching them up. So that gives me four blocks per, right? So there's going to be 51 is that divided by no that's times four times 50 or four yeah four times 51 no i have no freaking clue you guys know i am horrible with math horrible horrible math is that divided by no it's not divided by it can't be divided by. four times 51 because there's 51 things and they're going to get 40 So however many that is, will give me a number. On how many pieces I will have. Roughly 204. Okay. Roughly 200. All right. So that's like 20 across by 20 down, right? Somewhere around there for 200. I'll have to do a number in my head thinking. There's, they're very versatile half square triangles, so I can lay them out however. It is, isn't it? Before I finish sewing all the way around. It is a pretty, pretty green. Very pretty. See, and I hold them up here so you guys can actually see them every time I put one up here. I got 17 of you today or tonight. That's really cool. And if you guys are new, don't be afraid to talk. We don't bite. We are very nice here. Very real quilters, that's what we are.
I do have to say, this is going to be a lot of cutting. <laughs> I gotta cut the diagonals of all of these. Oh, and I don't have like a spinny mat either. Oh, yeah. That would be cool if there was a way you can just fold it like this, you know, cut right there. <laughs> no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Actually, it probably would work. Then you still got to open it up and cut the other direction. Y'all be sure and hit that like button. Helps with me out. Thank you, Kim, for the reminder. And I thank you guys all for being here. It's wonderful to have fellow insomniacs here with me, knowing that a lot of you are on the East Coast and it's probably super late. I have no idea the time here because the time on the iPad is wrong. Let me see what time it is according to my actual time. It's 11.59, so it's midnight here. Literally in a minute. So that means you guys have been hanging out with me for a day. Is sewing right now while I'm sewing. I have a hard time going on other people's chats and, and talking and sewing. I usually hit the talk text and then it pauses the, t the talking on the video, which kind of gets annoying because then I have to press play all over again. So most of the time, Either I listen and don't say anything at all, or I actually just chat and then do whatever other than sewing. Because I can't look up away from the sewing machine because I don't have peripheral vision. So I need to make sure what I'm doing. See, like I, I can't make sure that I know what I'm doing. Looks kind of okay. <laughs> trying to stay consistent here. Oops, shouldn't have cut yet. Oh, there's more people here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it's midnight for Tammy, two for Sarah, two, two for Kim, 3 a.m. for Kitty. Hi, Kitty. Uh, Karen uh, came to fall asleep, 2 a.m. Hi, Tiffany and everyone. Hi, Karen. Uh, Sharla. It's 2 a.m. there in North Texas. Little B Cross, it's 12. Uh, Marlene, hi. Hi, everybody, by the way. I'm not saying hi, but I'm saying your name. 
do you have a smaller cutting mat you can cut and turn the mat? Yeah, I do. I don't remember where I put all my extra cutting mats when I cleaned my room last, and they're not like an invisible sight, so unfortunately I'll have to look for them. I'll just cut. I have two sides to the table. I can stand on this side, cut one direction, and then stand on the other side of you guys and cut the other direction. Um, Karen, one saying hi. I'm um, taking a quick break. Just finished a few face masks. You know, it's one thing that I'm not making is face masks, guys, because I don't have any, um, oh, uh, what is the word for it? I don't have any stretchy stuff. <laughs> elastic, that's the word for it. I don't have any elastic. I do have stretch thread, though, but I don't think you can use stretch thread because I don't know how I would even sew that in. Hi, Gwen. Um, when I gave up on typing to sleep up, <laughs> Kitty is in WVA. I don't know where that is. All right, let me get to sewing some more. I don't have very much left to go. This is all I have left. Obviously, this is the cardboard, but that's what I have left. Not very much. I'm doing these pretty darn quick. Or at least I'm trying. <laughs> For those that are just joining, I am making my son, Cyrus. He's been begging me, Mom, 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 what are you going to make my quilt? So he's the only kid that didn't get more than one quilt item from me. So I'm making his quilt in a hurry. He chose the colors. He says it doesn't want anything fancy. So I'm making something simple. And since half square triangles are very versatile, I can do whatever with them. So I'm thinking, and I'm using nine and a half inch square, nine and a half inch square, or half square triangles. I think I'm going to get five or five and a half inch half square triangles out of this. I'm not 100% sure. I do know that it should be big enough for his bed if I add a border and the border is just going to be the same blue fabric. Like I said, he wants simple. He doesn't want anything uh, not simple. So I figured I could make this. I could make this in just a couple hours probably. My pedal is falling off. Oh, I'm going to turn me some music on. That way I can hear it, but you guys can't. Hopefully. You can just let me know if you hear music. If you don't hear music, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Oh, West Virginia. Okay. Uh, I used... Ties two inch fabric strips. My granddaughter's a nurse, so if you requested a few, ah, well, I do have um, a whole entire box of um, uh, bias tape, I guess is what it's called. Um, I have lots of that stuff, so I could make masks, but I'm just not. <laughs> Nobody has asked me to. And I don't even know where I would take them. Nobody's posted anything where I live. So I'm not going to overwhelm myself. I do have some for myself. And if my family needs to use them, I have some. Thanks to Kim right here hanging on the wall. And I have two in my bedroom because I've been using them. Scott just washed one of them because I was just wearing it the other day. So yeah, I have some. What I have been seeing that there is no elastic at any store. Plus my fabric store isn't even open. So I 
thousands of people are making masks. So I guess I'll be the exception of a sewer that doesn't make a mask, and I'm sorry for that. I could make one for a tutorial, but I think everybody has done a tutorial now on all sorts of tying ones and the ones with elastic and ones with HEPA filters and ones with um, uh, uh, pockets in them to put um, a filter and stuff. So. You guys don't need a mask video from me because all I would be doing is copying someone else's video. <laughs> I'm not in the designing mood to make a design that somebody already probably has done. There's nothing I can really do different than other people's masks. So um, I donated four plastic sacks of fabric for masks. Okay, that works, Gwen. Um, the elastic was bothering the nurse's ears. I could see that because it kind of irritates my... Nothing against the ones you made for me, Kim. <laughs> it just after after a while it starts like I could feel it right here so I have to take it off and if your hair is down and you put the mask on it pulls on your hair right here so that's the only thing but I still wear them because if I go anywhere I'd, I need to be safe because of my problems <sighs> you need both yeah I don't I just don't want to make them I'm not trying to like out on some obligation to help Americans, but I'm pretty sure this whole mask thing is taken care of, well taken care of. So I guess that doesn't make me selfish, it just makes me lazy. I don't want to make them. <laughs> I don't even want to do this right now, but I promise them. The more things I can get done finally and not have to have people asking me for it, the more I can focus on the patterns I have designed and get those things made. Because I've told you guys plenty of times, I actually have drawn up quite a few patterns, but I have all these customer things and then I was sick for so long and uh, just, I don't know. It's like I, I'm running out of fuel. <laughs> I don't have enough fuel in me to get more and more extra things done when I got to get the things that I planned for my channel done. Heck, I got my box ready to send to T-Quilts of my blocks and I have to wait till Monday to send them and then I guess supposedly someone told me and Scott that uh, supposedly the post office is closed to go in and mail things but I'm not 100% sure that could just be a rumor. So we'll find out because I won't be able to mail it if that be the case. And I really am, you know, I'm in the block swap for a reason. I really wanted to do that. But my blocks need to get to tea. Oh my goodness, almost at the bottom of the stack. Yay. You guys can't hear my music, right? When I wasn't talking or using the machine, it kind of sounded loud, but it might not be loud. Okay, I saw that. Don't mind. Please don't. I'm so tired of seeing everyone making masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone is agreeing. I don't know. I don't think I need to add to the mask making. Um, maybe. I can make a, another bag to throw all the extra masks in. <laughs> uh, I mean, myself. Oh, that's it. They asked for them here in Louisiana, then said no. You know, and it's probably because they're they're just made of cotton. It's like it's like a 50-50 chance the stuff will get on the fabric. So as soon as you take it off, you need to throw it directly into the dirty clothes and then wash your hands. But today I watched, or yeah, I watched a video today 
that says the virus can stay on plastic surfaces and metal surfaces and hard surfaces longer than on cloth surfaces. So if you are got the cough on <clears throat> and it gets on the fabric and someone coughed and it landed on it, as long as you wash that in hot water, it's going to be a little bit more, um, it'll be transferred to you apparently, you know, like obviously because you're touching it. But as long as you wash your hands, that the hot water from washing your hands and the soap is just going to wash the virus away. So as long as you're not like 100% in front of somebody who has the virus, your cloth mask should work as long as you toss it in the dirty clothes directly after being in contact with them and then wash your hands. So, I mean, they're saying it'll work. They're saying it won't. It's like a 50-50 chance. You take your chances with the cloth mask. Um, but I don't know if you guys know, but truckers, you know, semi-truck drivers that drive, you know, things, places, they're doing their best to get around the country to deliver stores the specific masks that are needed or hospitals the specific things that are needed. So, I mean, it's just taking a while because the companies are making them, making them, making them, and now they got to get shipped to where they need to go. So... So be kind to your truckers, guys, because don't let those guys get sick. If a trucker gets sick, then you won't get the things that you need at your local stores because they're the guys that get it to you. So we can't let them get sick. But it'll take some time. As soon as everything's made, that those will be out on trucks and everybody will get what they need. And then the, some of these places are throwing away the masks. I already saw that one in an article that some of them, they're using them over their masks, their uh, M95 or whatever they're called, masks N95. Is that what it is? They're using the cloth masks over it for secondary protection and then they're throwing them in the trash. So all these things that you guys are making with our very expensive fabric are getting thrown in the trash. So, no. <laughs> I'm not making them. You guys can. Or whoever's you know doing it i'm not for my family maybe but i really don't need to make any for my family either because they're all staying indoors no music sounds okay good my post office is open but no employees oh you mean like to go in and get mail and stuff that's probably the part that's open is like my p.o box is um my p.o box place is open like i can go in and get from my p.o box but <sighs> that's it i don't think the actual post office post office part is but we'll see if the, our rumor is an accurate rumor or just a rumor i keep wanting to look right here but i know you guys are right there um we'll see soon if it's just a rumor or not I totally have such a hard time with this needle threading business. Ooh. Okay. All right, back on track. First thread break of this whole entire thing. Almost got to the whole entire end of a stack and I had a thread break, which is rare for this machine. Happens on the long arm more often. Only at the beginning, though, of a thread spool. All right, only like five or six more left. Some of these don't even match this blue, but I don't care. His choice, not mine. White would have looked weird, though, because some of the blocks were almost white. And then red would have looked weird, because I don't even have red. <laughs> but it would have looked weird. So this is the color he chose. Plus, I don't think I would have had enough white. 
and black would have blended too much with these colors, you know what I mean? What thread are, is on the giant cone? Coates and Clark is the thread that I have. Um, some of these are just random though. I order. This is just made in China, cotton thread. Um, I order from all sorts of random websites. Uh, I order from Wish a lot and they actually have pretty good thread on Wish, um, surprisingly. And it's not very expensive, but. I like the big cones. Hopefully these don't fall as I tip it. So I like the big cones. This is not thread though. <laughs> This is like, a, I don't know, some kind of thick stuff. What is this even called? Crochet cotton. Made in the USA. So, um, exactly regular thread. But I get all sorts of really cool colors. I like them. And they're no names. You can see there's nothing in there. They're just no names. But I buy them in the big, huge things. So that I can have tons and tons of choices. I like this blue. And then sometimes they come smashed or broken. But that's okay because the thread still comes off of it. So yeah, I just buy big spools but really pretty colors. This one doesn't even have a name. I don't know. I like them. And they last forever. I can actually get that back in now. I used to keep them on the shelf, but now I don't because the baby was knocking them down. Um. I forgot who it was, but somebody posted in the Facebook group asking what um, threads I buy, and I buy them in bulk, and you can get them besides on Wish. Um, there's another company and I put a link in the comment section of that, of another place that I bought thread and it's, um, like, a uh, what is it called? Like, um, where you can buy for the price that it costs. Uh, oh my goodness. I don't know, whatever it is. I bought from there before. It's like um, the prices that you would be charged before going to an actual store and buying it. Not discount, but um, you guys know what I'm trying to say. I can't say it. Wholesale. Thank you. That's the word. <laughs> I buy from a wholesale site and I put the link in there. For the site that I've bought from, but I'd be careful sometimes on some of the sites. Now I know wish takes forever, but I don't order fabric from them anymore. Never again, ever, but I have gotten thread and they have variegated thread on there. For so super like I've gotten so much variegated thread and it's amazing thread. It runs through both this and I've read it on the long arm before. Surprisingly, it is good surprisingly. And it's some of it is Paul, no, what is it? Polycore, poly. Okay, hold on. My glide is polycore, poly wrapped, or poly wrapped, polycore, or whatever. Then there's cotton wrapped polycore. Then there's cotton core poly wrapped. Um, I'm trying to think of the other one. There's another one. They're they're mixed blends between cotton and poly though, or spun core. Uh, cotton spun core poly treated or something like that. There's like a lot of them, different choices. And that's on Wish. And you can get the big, huge cone like this on Wish for like two bucks plus a dollar shipping. And it takes a month to get here, but two bucks? Come on now. Can't pass that up. Can't pass that up. Scott doesn't um, bother me when I order thread from there. He's like, why is it that you can go to the quilt store and get the glide thread 
for $10 a spool and it's 5,500 yards when I can get these, which are 3,000 yards for $2. And it's the same thing, except this is very dusty cotton and the glide is 100% polyester. So, I mean, I don't know. He doesn't understand the difference in the pricing. He's like, why can't you just run this stuff through the lawn? The long arm does not like these random ones that I use from Wish. It likes the um, variegated thread, though. But it does not like these. Because I've already tried. There's two out there that it did, though, that it liked, that it was okay with. And then there was another brand of thread. It's out in the garage. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but it's a really good um, cotton, and it's very, very, very linty as well. Um, that I got at my quilt store for $4 for a big, huge spool, and it's like 6,000-yard spool. And I got it for 4 bucks from my quilt shop. And um, I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. It's a really good thread. And you can get it in the big, huge cone. And I'm, because I can't use it out there, I mean, I can use it on the long arm, but the colors that I have don't match anything. I could just bring them in here and use them. So that's really nice. It's a nice brand. There are so many different threads out there. But white and black, I get wholesale. I get like four whites at a time. Every time I buy them, I get four. Every time I buy black, I get four spools at a time on the wholesale website. And they're usually cotton poly, no, cotton core poly wrapped or poly wrapped cotton core. Oh, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. It's one of those things. And I forgot to turn my vibration off on my phone. Sorry, guys. At least it's not as bad as it usually is. I keep meaning to try the glide. I've heard that it has a nice sheen. Yes, it is very bright and shiny. But I do have something to say about the glide thread. It's amazing for long arm and or free motion quilting. But for piecing... It's, I don't think it's a good idea for piecing. Um, nothing against it's just too shiny to waste for piecing, if that makes any sense. It's too, uh, it's too beautiful to be behind everything and hidden inside the quilt. Um, glide is great for actual quilting and quilting. Sit down for emotion and or long arm quilting. I do however match whatever quilting thread sometimes when i use the long arm i quilt it in a color and then i'll bring that color inside for the binding um that way it matches but 90 percent of the time i just use whatever color matches the binding but sometimes i bring the same quilting color in for the binding but it's always really shiny and beautiful and i Personally, at my local shop, they sell it for ten. It's nine ninety five for a spool, and it's five thousand five hundred yards. Um, they sell the smaller spool, which is like two dollars cheaper. So it's actually one hundred percent cheaper to buy the big, huge spool than the little one. But if you want any kind of variegated color, it's almost twenty dollars for a spool with less. It's like three thousand six hundred yards or something like that for the variegated glide thread. But it runs magnificent. I don't have to ever change the tension when when I go from this to the glide or any brand of thread, like when I use any of say these oops, I'm throwing thread. If I use any of these spools, you know, because I need a different color or something. I can switch from this to anything and the glide and not change any tension ever. But then if I switch from this to a different one of these, to a different one of these, to a different one of these, it always messes up my tension. Um, so yeah, the glide works like you can leave it however it is and it works amazing. It's like it, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It just does. It works amazing. And on the long arm, 
I've had like, I don't know, I could do a queen size quilt and break thread maybe, maybe four or five times. Um, and when I mean break, I mean the thread snap. So that's just how they roll the spool though, and it'll get stuck maybe at the top tension wind, and then it'll just snap it. And that that's just the manufactured defect in the quilt um, in the thread. I don't know how I got on a thread subject. How did I get on that thread subject? <coughs> All I know is I prefer the big spools. It lasts me longer. Um, I'm on this. I just turned opened this one. What like the day I started? Um, the day I started the customer quilt, the pug quilt, um, is when I opened. Um, well, on wound this, it, it comes in a little knot on the front where you can find it. And I pulled the knot out. I rolled um, six bobbins and now I have one left and one's in here and it's still almost a full roll. The only thing is it's made in China. I don't know how many different brands of thread are made in China, but I can tell you right now, a lot of brands are made in China. Just like our fabric, made in China, Taiwan, all sorts of places. Because that's where they, you know, it's cheaper for them to be employed to spin the cotton and make it. Just like our batiks, a lot of them come from Indonesia and so on and so forth. So. I think it all works just the same no matter where it comes from. And look, two more pieces. Woohoo! And then I get to start cutting. I'm wondering how long I've been on. Um, where are we at? Oh. Okay, good night, Pamela. Oh no, Pamela is saying good night to Charlotte. Okay, good night, Charlotte. Get some sleep. Need some more than that uh, in Canada, BJ. Good show. The price of thread is outrageous in stores. Might not buy thread at Joanne's when it's on sale, like the Guterman. Um, I have a bunch of those out there in the garage that I tried, but like I told you, you can't use small spools on a long arm. Reason for that is they get, end up flying up off of the thing and getting stuck. Like here's where the long arm thread thing mounts on, you know, the stick thing. And then the, the top part of it's like this much taller and it winds up over that. Those little threads, even using a cap, I don't even know what my caps are. I brought them in here because I don't actually need them. There's a little cap that slides on on the top to hold it on there. And somehow, some way, it manages to go fling and it flies across and then it gets wound up and stuck. <laughs> so I tend not to use that. Uh, the small spools. And I've actually never found Guterman thread in a big, huge spool like this with, you know, at least more than 3,000 yards. I've been quilting, pretty much quilting for five years now. When I told people that was my craft, their response was expensive hobby. Yeah. A friend ordered the thread from Connecting Threads, low price for a big amount, but it was linty, clogged her machine, and cost her $159 to clean. What thread from Connecting Threads? They have like seven or eight different main big, huge threads. Are you kidding me? I've never had a problem with um, my glide being linty at all. This stuff is linty. But it's cheap and I end up paying like um, about 
Well, if I order from Wish, I get it for two, technically three dollars for a spool. If I order from um, wholesale places, then I get four spools for fifteen dollars. So that makes it four, three, three something, four something. Yeah, four something a uh, uh, for a spool, which is actually really good because it lasts forever. Um, and if I go to my quilt shop and I buy there, it depends on the brand, but Glide is the cheapest. Um, they have other brands there like Aurifil. It's the same thread to me, honestly. They're all the same. My machine out in the garage likes a specific one. This one, this machine, not picky. I can use anything in this machine, like literally anything. All right, last piece. Woo I think CJ counted wrong because I have one left of these. That's okay. If I mess up, I can just add that somewhere. All right, throw that out of the way. So this last set, and then I could start cutting. Look at that. I sewed however many, 50 or 51 pieces. Definitely don't think the kid counted correctly. He was probably in a hurry because he wanted me to just get this done. the brand that sells for around $3 for 1200 yard spool. Good night. Good morning. It's 34. Okay, kitty. See you next time. All right, guys. Here's my stack. Now it's time to cut. So I'm going to put the camera up here facing down there and cut. Or you guys could just watch me because I like talking to you. So we will just bring it over here let's go for a spin oops sorry didn't mean for that to fall okay oh look at this you'll be able to me hopefully and that can stay right there so i can see cronuts i can go over there i do need a ruler to be able to cut it's my face in the screen you guys I want you to see the cutting area and my face my face in the screen ah, hi oh where'd my oh there it is so here is my 6 by 24 Fiskars pink yes it's pink ruler. I don't use these anymore because of my new one. All right. I'm going to cut from corner to corner and then corner to corner on all of these. And then I have to press them all. Oy, that's going to be a lot of work. So I'm going to line it up corner to corner, pick it up, move it. And this is an awkward position, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so let's see how big, because I was curious it was five or five and a half inch. I'm going to press all these towards that dark blue, every single one of them. So we got oh, six, six and an eighth, but I think I'm going to leave them. If they all come out exactly the same, I don't think it matters because he don't care, so I don't care. So let's see. Let's check out another one. See if it comes out the same. One, two, three, four. So this one's six and a quarter. I might have to cut them all down to six inches then. Let's see. After I press them, I'll have more accurate. So this one's six and a quarter. So they're all going to be like six and a quarter once I press them. 
Yep. Okay. So there's six and a quarter. So if I did that with 10 inch squares, I'd get seven inch pieces. Interesting. All right, here we go. I'm going to cut again and cut again and cut again until they're all chopped up. And I'm trying to just go from my right hand instead of doing left and right hand cutting. So I have two sides of my table. And here's another one. Sometimes I like to finger press them. They tell you not to do this, but I've never had a problem with the stretching of the bias when I finger press them like this because I'm not pulling. I'm just running my finger across it, if that makes any sense. And I'm pressing them all to the same side so that I don't get no bowing or anything. Oops, that would be this way. Okay, so instead of opening them all, I'm just kind of showing you guys this is what I'm doing. All right, so let's chop all these up. Bring it. Keep it there. Pick it up. Come to this side. I think I like cutting from the other side of the table better. And I just realized you could probably hear the music now because you guys are on the radio side. Alright, so I'm just going to toss these aside now because I'll press them in a minute at the ironing board. And I forgot to look how long I've been on too while I was at it. Uh, where am I at? An hour and 32 minutes? Okay, that's not bad. I want to stack them where all the blues are on the top so that when I press them, it's easy. Pick it up. Do this side. See, this is why I like having a walk around table, guys. Makes it so much easier. So I'm just kind of doing it this way so that I can do both. This ruler is totally too long for what I'm doing here, but I don't have any anything longer, I mean shorter, but long enough to cross both sides. I want to get a couple of the Missouri Star rulers, but haven't had money for that kind of stuff. Plus, you know, you work with what you got, honestly. All right, and see all these are going to get mixed up as well once I, um, what's the word for it, once I press them, I'm going to mix them all up because when I lay everything out, it's going to be all mixed up. So this is fun. A second. I'll read the comments in two seconds. Oh. Good night, Sarah. Um, BJ said yes to what? What did BJ say yes to? Good night, Kitty. Did I see that? Okay, there we go. Good night, good night, good night, good night. I know you guys are right here and I'm reading comments right here. So weird. Um, yes, BJ said yes to I don't know what. Uh, maybe I will get a video today. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Everyone's saying good night. All right. Little B Cross said that put a bump on my head. LOL. Hi, Connor. Welcome. Hi, uh, Connor. Hi, Kim Gwen. Hi, guys. Uh, getting sleepy. Getting sleepy, Gwen. No, you can't. I'm just kidding. 
Uh, Pamela going to go eyelids are heavy 241. Oh, Pam. Okay. We'll see you next time. Kim says, which MSQC rulers? Well, the ones I would like is since I do a lot of um, layer cake and uh, that kind of stuff. I do layer cakes, charm squares, and jelly rolls a lot. I've been wanting the, I don't know what size theirs is. Like this is a six by 12. I think theirs is like um, five because I like, right, it fits perfect on half of a 10 inch square by I don't know what it is because hers goes from corner to corner mine does not so it's got to be at least 16 inches or something or 15 inches so I kind of want one of those and then um that little two and a half by I don't know seven inch or something like that one that she uses I kind of like that one and then there's a couple other ones I want the big Dresden that they have because I just do my Dresden is small and I've been making nothing but small Dresdens. You know, when I do make Dresden quilts, I want to make something bigger, but you can't add to the, the ones that you have because then it changes the size of the, um, what is the word for it? The, oh my goodness. It, cha it changes the angle of a Dresden. So I, I want to get a Dresden too, but I don't know. We'll see what happens someday. And there's a couple other things that I've wanted over time that I see, like that burst, I think it's burst, a burst block or something like that. I kind of want to make that. I think it was Rob Appel, Rob Appel used it for one of his quilts, but Jenny Doan used that for the Missouri Star, used it to make a burst quilt differently than Rob Appel did. And yeah, I've had ideas, like if I had that one, I would be able to come up with something that they haven't come up with yet <laughs> at least somebody hasn't made a video of it at least type something so there's a couple that i would get if i had the money definitely i don't need too many rulers i just need a couple that are make some of this process easier because if you haven't noticed this hangs off too far and if i go too high then I can't pick it up properly. I have to actually slide it to me. That's the only thing about using bigger rulers for projects. Sometimes it's nice to actually have something that's the correct, accurate size. I'm good, Kim, thanks. Stuck at home because of this quarantine. Night, Pamela. Tammy has the 2.5 and 7 inch stuff. Does it make it easier for you, Tammy, to cut, like, say, jelly roll strips because it's two and a half inches? Because you're just cutting two and a half inch squares. Like, to me, that seems so much easier. Connor said, only yesterday did the government here lock down the whole country for two weeks. Or count. Is that country? Yeah, country for two weeks. AJ said, yes, I can see you. Kim says, 5 by 15. Ah, okay, that's what size it is. I knew it was something like that. It needs to be able to go from top to bottom of a 10-inch. These aren't 10-inch, but, you know, it needs to at least go through it. And I know theirs are specifically designed for that. Any other kind of stuff that they have, like Missouri Star, I know, has templates for, like, uh, orange peel and stuff. I don't need stuff like that because it's cut out on my own, really. <laughs> I probably even have it in one of my books because I have a ton of books. Well, not a ton. I have one shelf with all my books. And I have Missouri Star books, too, with the um, some of the patterns that I want to do also. I should do them as tutorials. I mean, they can't tell me I can't because a lot of other people have made the same thing. If that makes any sense. So that'd be cool to do some of their stuff as tutorials. Definitely want to do the burst one, but something my way. Oh, and another ruler I, I want, and it doesn't even have to be Missouri Star, even though theirs is like perfect. I want to do the Junkard's Path because it looks fun. And Kim, the, what, the picture that you just showed me of your Junkard's Path thing. Something like that would be awesome or change it up a little, you know. I think that would be cool. 
again, that's a lot of wishing and wanting. I have a lot more other things that I need to get done before I think about new rulers and new projects. <laughs> Let me just get Cyrus's thing all built, which shouldn't take too much longer after I get all these cut and pressed. Once they're all cut and pressed, the sewing part goes quite goes pretty quick, especially if I have, have a um, layout in mind, which I kind of do now that I'm thinking about it while I'm cutting. I, I'm like thinking something that a boy would want. And if I have 200 pieces, I think it would work. Wow, this is going to take a minute to cut all these up. It's going to tire me out. I'm going to probably want to go to sleep after this. I'm going to like <coughs> go eat me some can of butter and, and vanilla wafers and pass them out. <laughs> Notice I cut those words out. <laughs> I'm going to pass it out. Oh yeah, and I'm back on uh, eating THC stuff again, guys. I know some of you said that you've tried it and stuff, but I can tell you right now, I don't take much. <laughs> um, a family member made me some um, can of butter. So it's butter that you can put on toast, baked potato or anything like that. I don't even use enough to do that because I don't like to feel high. And a lot of you have already expressed the same thing and chat about it because we've chatted about it before. Um, I started taking it again because my insomnia has just like gone rapid and I'm, my brain just goes, Bzzz, but my body is not caught up anymore. It's like, I don't know if you guys notice, I get out of breath a lot easily lately since this last bronchitis thing. Anyway, um, so some can of butter for me and I take literally about a little quarter inch square worth, not even much at all. And I say quarter inch square worth because that's all I'm taking. And then I just spread it on vanilla wafer minis, put another vanilla wafer mini on top and eat it almost like an hour and 45 minutes to two hours later. It finally affects me. As soon as I get that sensation, it says, Tiffany, go to sleep. And it, it's not a high, like if you were to smoke pot or something kind of high, it's like a a strange relaxation instead of taking pills, you know, where you would get that weird, I need to sleep from taking like, I don't know if some of you've tried morphine or Dilaudid or things like that for pain management, which I used to take for my MS pain management. Um, it's not like that kind of sensation. It's not like the sensation in the hospital right before getting a procedure and they want to give you something to relax you. Um, it's not like that kind of feeling. But if I don't take advantage of that feeling that I get when I take the stuff and my body starts feeling like my brain gets it and I start feeling tired enough to sleep, if I don't go to sleep when I feel that, it's got the opposite effect and I end up hyper. I didn't take it yet tonight. So I'm already like my normal hyper, but I'm telling you right now, it's actually been working to put me to sleep. And normally, and you guys know this, I've only sleep four hours or less two to four hours at the most is what I sleep. And I always wake to pee because I had MS and I have an MS bladder for anybody that understands what that is. And yeah, I haven't been waking to pee and I've been sleeping four hours solid. So, I mean, it's been like a godsend having that. Um, it's very, very expensive stuff, but uh, it is working. So if you guys have that stuff legal in your state and you're suffering from fibromyalgia, MS, or any kind of um, rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, or psoriatic arthritis, or anything that causes pain and like, so much pain that you can't fall asleep, I would suggest the can of butter because you can put it on anything and you eat it and it helps. And it was better than the gummies. Gummies are so absolutely 100% disgusting. Like, why am I on this subject? I don't know, but I'm trying to let you know that I actually found something that helps me pass out. <laughs> it takes a while to affect me, but the fact of the matter is I've been getting really good sleep with it. So if you have trouble and you have it approved in your state, I would say look into it. I mean, it's not completely outrageous in price. You would have to, you would have to forego maybe buying like two jelly rolls and two layer cakes that month, you know, worth of fabric. But I think it's worth it when you can't sleep 
you know, to try it for those that can handle it at least. Da, 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 da. Okay, hold on. Let me get back up to these. Okay. All right. I could see five by 15. I got the rulers when they did the daily deal. Uh, I guess I'm really there. I guess I'm really tired. Yes, but I had to add non-slip stickers. Oh, you mean on the rulers for the Missouri Star? Oh, non-slips. I use the, um, to make my rulers non-stick besides using, okay, so my fussy cut rulers have, um, what is the word for it? Uh, hot glue gun glue on them. And I'm just going to try to work while talking. My hot, my fussy cut rulers have hot glue gun on them, which makes fussy cutting so much easier because you just turn the fabric with the ruler and it actually turns everything equally and nice and doesn't distort. But for my bigger rulers, except for these, I have medical tape on them that you can get at the dollar a roll of medical tape. And it seems to work really well. There's one problem with it. If you're trying to cut something that's a specific size and your medical tape is lined up on it weird, which I had on here, um, it gets in the way and it'll want it to shift to where it kind of hooks. So if I had it sitting at right here and right here, you just kind of see there's still a little bit of residue. They were right here and right here. So every time I went to cut one and a half inches, it would get stuck on that. And it would want to take me over to one and, you know, three eighths or something because it was getting stuck on it. So that was my only big problem with the medical grade tape on the back. My new ruler from Teresa, the big huge one, this one right here, the Quilter Select. The Quilter Select, I noticed they have a lot more rulers. I don't know if I want a ton more of these though in the future because these stick to the fabric so well, but you have to pick the ruler up every time. And these, these are quite heavy rulers. They're not light compared to the Fiskars ruler. It's a very light ruler. This has actually got some weight to it. So Quilter Select rulers are not, um, they're not meant to move. See, these, even on here, these just slide around like crazy, but they're, they're a little bit on the heavy side. So I don't know if I would want a ton of these. This is great for cutting yardage though let me tell you I can cut my two and a half inch squares now way more equally with that ruler than any time that I had this and I don't have to angle my um, cutting anymore because uh, with that ruler it holds it down so well I don't have to angle the blade at first with these rulers I um, I was angling my blade just ever so slightly and uh, I was getting more accurate cut that way, but now with the new one, I don't actually have to. Um, I love the three and a half by six and a half inch ruler. There's a three and a half by six and a half inch ruler. Who's that made by BJ? Let me know. I like the half hexes and the tumbler. I actually. have the Marty Michelle one for the tumbler right here. I don't know how I can even hold it up, but I have this one, the Marty Michelle tumbler. And then it has actually patterns on how to make stuff in there. My husband actually let me buy it <laughs> because I really wanted to make stuff with it. And then I have I have this one. I have never even opened it yet. It's called Diamond Jubilee. I haven't opened it yet. It's supposed to make something that looks like a, um, what is the word for it? A uh, double wedding ring almost. It makes this weird looking thing right here. But it looks like a double wedding. I haven't opened it yet, but um, I got it at my daughter's work at Tuesday morning. And I was thinking of trying it, but I don't know. Oh, I don't have any other ones. Oh, I did. 
I did have a pattern. <laughs> I got a pattern once that was in centimeters. So it must've came from another country who writes in centimeters. So I actually got a ruler in centimeters to do that pattern. So this is a centimeters ruler. It is 15 centimeters big. <laughs> so yeah, if I ever need to do anything with centimeters again, I have a ruler for it. So yeah, I don't, and then you guys see the other ones I have on the wall. I have a pineapple one. I actually had two. I gave the other one away to someone who wanted it because they're like, oh, I want to make a pineapple block because they saw mine, but actually didn't use the ruler to make mine. And when I finish mine, I won't use the ruler either, but I will use the ruler to see the difference in making it with and without the ruler when I finally get to finishing them. My hair is in my mouth like crazy tonight. Um, I should show you guys my pineapple box. They're really close to me. Wrap them and show ya. I think that would be cool. What a pineapple block looks like made without a ruler. You really don't need the fancy rulers for some things. All right, so this is pineapple blocks made without the ruler. So here's the stuff that I cut for it. It's all ready. These are all one and a half inch strips and it was greens and blues. So here is a block made without a ruler. And obviously my color scheme did not come out the way it should have. I think it was supposed to be like all greens and blues on this side and all whites or something on this side, or maybe all whatever. I don't know, but I did them all where the white comes around every single one of them. I thought it looked really cool at the time. So I only made like we're at three, let's see, four. bad and six so I only made six blocks so far <laughs> but that's done without the ruler so I mean it's not that hard I think the ruler starts with like a two and a half inch square uh, I, know, I can't tell I can't see it from here I think it starts with two and a half inch square though I think I started with like a two inch square right here <laughs> instead so I think they look really cool though. And I didn't have big pieces for the end. I didn't know that you needed a big triangle for each end. And these are actually two pieces. There's a seam because I didn't know, but I had this like border print that I cut up <laughs> to be the little centers and they matched with my greens and my blues. So I had fun with this. I just have never finished it. I should though because I have a lot more to make um, started projects guys like and I have things that I um, got like, uh, what is it called? Um, restoration quilts that need restoring, like they're old and they need to be uh, made looking awesome again into a quilt because they're just the tops. So I have a couple of those I need to load on the long arm and do. I should show you one. One of them is in the box underneath this um, desk. And I'm still trying to cut at the same time. Uh, let's see. I like the half hexes on the tumbler. All right. Good night, Tammy. I didn't even see that because I'm not really paying attention. Um, 
I'd like to try it for pain management. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so on that, any kind of medical marijuana, so far that I've tried CBD stuff, doesn't work. That's just a load of bull crap. Like, for me it is. I don't know about anybody else, but they make, you know, CBD lotions and stuff like that. From personal experience now, the stuff with THC is better. Now, I could tell you one thing. If you go to a pain management, I don't anymore, but if you go to pain management type doctors and they do their blood tests because now most pain management facilities are required to blood test by law the patients who receive any kind of opiates. So if you get those and they go and you go there and you get blood tested, you will have THC in your system. You can get kicked out. So it's you choose one or the other. So you're going to have to try it once, twice. If it does help with pain, which I can say for personally with me, it doesn't. What it does is it just makes me sleepy. Um, kind of hungry. If, if I don't take advantage of the sleep, I become hungry and I can eat a lot of food. <laughs> so, I mean, it's up to you if you want to try it, but make sure you tell your pain management doctor that you tried it because most people get blood tested. And I know because I used to get blood tested and that was like five or six years ago that I went to pain management. So I don't need more, but I guess it depends on your type of pain that you're trying to get rid of. Um, for arthritis and stuff like that, it's a weird sensation. Like I don't say it completely takes your pain away. Some people it probably does for me. Maybe it's just because of the kind of pain I have with nerve problems, you know, um, it's touch and go. I don't take enough for pain relief. I take enough to make me tired and that's it. If I took it three or four times a day, then maybe it would help with pain. But like I said, I only take it to sleep. So, I mean, it's worth a shot if you want to try it. Um, you know, I don't know where, if your state doesn't have it legally, I don't know how you would get it. Honestly, I'm not sure. Oh, my brother had a mess. Yeah, it's it's very tough. I, I'm 20 years now. I've been the last, I don't know, about 12 years now is like the worst. It's been the worst since the first time I woke up one day and I couldn't use my legs and I was in my wheelchair for almost three years. It was horrible. And ever since then, it's just off and on wheelchair because I progressed in the secondary progressive. So and there's nothing they can do most treatments don't work and I was just denied another treatment and there's reasons for that but um it's not just insurance anymore um, whoop, I lost where I was okay I have to use the film or spray for the big rulers spray there's a spray for rulers creative grids uh, metric is all I can read uh, that's beautiful. Creative Kids also has a 3 by 5 by 125 inch rectangle ruler. Uh, love them. Pineapple. Love those colors. Hi, Vicki. Uh, pain management didn't work. I no longer go. I have nerve damage. You could try it for the nerve damage. I mean, find somebody you know that has it. Try it. And then if it, if it doesn't work for you, then obviously you can try something new. Mine is nerve damage too, so... And it's really bad because the reason why, okay, so a lot of you don't fully understand. The reason why my doctor wants me to keep my weight up and I have tons of tummy problems is because my vagus nerve, which is the nerve that runs from your brain to your gut, um, that doesn't work for me. It is messed up. It is fully damaged. It's lost a lot of the covering and coating that coats the nerves and it doesn't work. And it's entangled in my diaphragm which is when I had surgery, the, the last surgery I had on my belly. Um, I had so much scar tissue around it that it's so damaged that uh, it doesn't work properly. So my belly says, oh, you're full or you're not full or you're starving. And then I'll go to do eat or something and then I get sick from it. So I have to, some of the signals that my brain gets saying I'm hungry or not, I actually have to wait until I have a severe stomach ache with like weird cramps and gurgling before I realize I really am hungry. So I have a hard time keeping my weight up. So I actually force myself to eat certain meals certain times of the day because my belly doesn't give my brain the signal and says it's time to eat because it's all damaged. 
Thanks to MS. The nerves to my bladder are messed up, so my bladder doesn't work properly. Um, and so on and so forth with interior parts of my body. It's kind of sucky. Nerve damage, let me tell you. So I've been trying lots of things over the years, and I don't drink, and I won't ever smoke the pot. I don't like the taste of it, so it really has to be cooked into something good. So that's why I went with butter, because it still smells horrible, like super horrible, but with, mixed with vanilla wafers, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think I would put it on a baked potato, because I think it would ruin the baked potato. But you can make the butter into brownies by using the butter as oil. You can make it into cookies by using the butter as, you know, foil on each of them, you know. So, I don't know. You can try it. Get an edible from someone. See how you feel. Don't eat the gummies. They taste horrible. Absolutely horrible. That's the worst. Trust me. It's horrible. <laughs> I'm serious. Very horrible. Not even the ones that supposedly have flavor. Oh, here, try a strawberry gummy. No, thank you. That stuff's so gross. Oh, yeah. This is going to take forever because I'm talking so much. Mm. Oh, well, too earthy. So what is everybody doing now? That it's even later. I've been on for what over an hour now, almost two probably. Screwballing around. I'm trying to get these all done. I should turn the iron on and start pressing some of these, I guess, the way that some of them are done, but I like to like do it all at once. And I could be daring and stack two of these on top of each other. I've done that before. I mean, they are technically all the same exact size. So I should be landing exactly in both corners each time. So let's look just to see. I want to, I want to see this whole stacking too. You can be daring and do that. Those, they all line up. So that one goes about right there. And that one is, oh, perfect. Let's see. We're going to do two at a time. Let's see how this works. As long as I try not to move or adjust anything. Look at this, guys. I'm actually doing it two at a time. I don't think I would do more than two, though. <laughs> That's a lot of, in case it doesn't work out. Oh, well, that worked perfect. That worked perfect. I'm looking at the thing to make sure there's not another crease and it landed perfect on all of them i'm gonna start cutting them in fours <laughs> uh, line them up they're the exact same size they have the exact same quarter inch seam so they should be perfect oh, this one's not there we go right there right there i'm doing something that most people won't do, but I'm in a hurry to get these cut so I can press them. Look at that, I'm feeling good. Make sure I got it. Ooh, perfect. Perfect. Not so perfect, but look, okay, so I'm going to show you this as close as I can get it. See how that line is right here and it crossed over and it's still kind of right there, the stitching. It didn't really connect at that center point. This is why we don't cut more, you know, stack them like that. But so far, that seems to be the only one. So, I mean, you can take your chance on cutting more than one at a time. I don't know. It's up to you. I guess I could just stick with one. I just ate a snack. Oh, I want a snack, Kim. Virtually send me a snack. I don't have any in here either. I used to keep my Mike and Ike's in here, but I think CJ stole them and ate them because that was the, excuse me. I keep getting the hiccups. 
horrible. <clears throat> I already talked to you, Kim, about some thing, but I'm not gonna bring it up right now. But this hiccup shit is annoying constantly. Hiccups. Burning. I hate hiccups, guys. Do you guys hate the hiccups? Because I do. Some kind of nerve problem, I think, that keeps causing them. So I'm drinking plenty of fluids. I ain't swallowing the air, so I can't. I don't think that's the problem. And you guys know, um, there's a group to join. I, I got to go through all these things little by little throughout the video. Um, if you're interested, you can share your projects and the things that you guys are doing. And I haven't been posting a lot lately, unfortunately. I've been kind of slacking in that department. But I do love to see what you guys are doing and see the projects that you, you know, would like to share with the rest of the group. So don't forget in the description below of every single video is a link to the group. I went and fixed the link so it should pop up. Um, in all the videos correctly, but if it gets messed up again, I can change it again. I don't know what happened the last time. I had to actually go on the computer to fix that. But there's also my Instagram, which I haven't been posting on. Um, again, I've been really slacky with posting things. Um, usually I post every project in the process of every project, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm just not in the mood for social media because of this whole coronavirus stuff and that's all I see but you guys can post there join it um what was else was I gonna say I'm always around day and night <laughs> and uh, if you need to ask questions or curious about something or anything that you see in a video um also my insomniac videos are not named you never know what I'm going to be making or doing. Um, it's always random, like a TV episode. Insomniac series videos are always after 10 p.m. Arizona time because normal people go to bed around 9 or 10. I guess. I don't know. I actually don't know what time normal people go to bed, but um, I know people with little kids go to bed about this time. <laughs> but uh, they're always after 10 p.m. And so Sunday is my other video series. So Sundays are 5 p.m. or around 5 p.m. I do my best to make it at 5 p.m. on Sundays for So Sunday. That is always random as well. I am a very random person, so um, I keep it real. I show you all I know, tell you all I know, and direct you through everything that I do, which I have been told is very descriptive and um, is liked by a lot of people. I usually take you through the process of beginning to end. So when I make a video, you usually see a video with that same project over and over until it's complete. Um, I like making it that way, start to finish projects. Uh, I do have to say in advance, I am sorry for long arm videos lately. I just cannot get the camera to not shake. I we need to come up, not we, I, and my husband and my son or somebody needs to come up with something that I can mount onto my long arm safely because the two mounts that I have have gone through now, actually three mounts, but the two that I have hooked up right now, they both shake and wiggle. Um, I do know that I need to adjust the lighting, but other than that, oh, let me just turn this iron on. Um, other than that, as soon as I have backing fabric for more and more quilts, I will be able to get on the long arm and do lots more quilting. Um, I try to walk you through it. It's really hard because either the lighting is messed up and or the video feed doesn't catch up with the movement of the long arm. And I'm sorry for that in advance, but you still see what I'm doing, sort of, and I explain everything. All right, here's my pile. Look at this. Here is my big huge pile that I'm going to take over to the uh, chain on the <coughs> While I'm turning the camera, I am going to show you guys the quilt that came off the frame. It is not bound yet, but I did trim it. 
So I'm going to hang this up while I'm at it. Let me turn the camera. Take you guys for another trip. I have no idea if I'm in frame. Let's see. I might have to tip you. There we go. I guess. All right. So I'm going to take this huge pile. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lots and lots and lots of blocks are going to be made. So I'm going to put this over on the ironing board. I'm even dropping them on the floor. And I'm going to chain iron all these while I'm still on this video. Although I think I've been on for two hours now. Oh yeah. Two hours and 11 minutes, but I really don't care. I just realized that the kids knocked my spool holder down and lost the end of it. Just absolutely wonderful. All right. It's huge. I can't open the whole entire thing, but I'll come close to show you the quilting. Can you see that? So I have see this green right here and this pink this pink and this green I have those two left I do not have any more of this blue right here I don't have any more of that so at least I don't think I do I'm pretty sure I don't I think I used the last of it in this but I do have the green and the pink so I could probably do the top and the side and green and the top the, the side and the bottom and, and the green or pink, you know, I don't know. Or I can use the backing, which I'll show you in a second. I'm going to bring it close so that you can see the quilting. I'm going to hold it and stare. Until I see quilting. Can you see it? Nah. Okay, so that's the quilting. It's really cool. And the back is this. So the color cotton candy glide thread that I used. Look at how well that blended on the back. It's like you can't even see it. It's like perfect. So, and that's the way, I mean, some people like the look of the quilting and do a solid back. Um, just so that they could have the look from the front quilting on the back, but this is just edge to edge, you know, but it's a flower, a regular one, which I've taught you guys before. And then there's a swirly and then there's a leaf that I just recently taught myself. And then there is also a pointed flower or let's see. Can you see that one really good? I'm trying to find the ones that are in the white. So it's easier to see. So there's a pointed flower, you know, four petals and then the small flower has three petals and then there are leaves scattered through the whole thing and to get where I needed to go I used swirlies and a swirly meander um let's see yeah Lori Holt house block 35 pieces oh you know I've never block yet I've been wanting to but I haven't done it um, that is beautiful, Tiffany. Very pretty. I would use the pink and green. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking. I have both. I don't think I have a lot of it. I probably have like one yard of each left, but I think it would look cool because it goes at the back too. See, because there's pink and green. So this is it. It is very large. With uh, since it was quilted, it shrunk an inch. It was eight uh, eighty-eight by. 101 and now it is 87 by 100. <laughs> Weird, right? Quilting does shrink things and if I would have did heavier quilting it would have shrunk even more. So once I wash it it will probably be like 85 by 98, 97, somewhere around there after being washed because none of this fabric is pre-washed. Sorry I'm trying to fold it 
I'm like a perfectionist when it comes to my folding. <laughs> so there's my, I, I named it churn dash fun for anybody. Um, and if you're interested in the video, oh, and here's a seam, by the way, can you tell there's a seam? Sort of. Anyway, and if you're interested in how to make it, I did a, um, uh, what is it called? Fast, uh, speed video, uh, time lapse. I did a time lapse video, but the directions are actually in the time lapse video. I recorded all, I think it was 18 hours of video in time lapse of how to make this. Plus, I showed you how to put the backing together in another video on So Sunday just recently. And I'll probably show you guys binding. We'll see. <laughs> if I can get to it in time. All right, so I'm going to take you guys over this way now. So I can see that. All right, guys, here we go for another little trip. I'm going to press all this now. I like when you can see me as well. Uh, pressing. I'm hoping I'm in the screen. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to have to back it up. If I back it up, then you can see more. Me and me pressing. There we go. That should be good. All right. Okay. Oh, my nail broke. <laughs> Go figure. Let me add some more. I've actually decided I've actually decided not to go get my nails um redone. Save some money. And I don't know because I'm trying to stay in the house. Uh, I'm just gonna let my nails get gross <laughs> for a couple months, I guess. They just fall apart. That's the only thing. All right, here we go. Pressing half square triangles. Slide it open. Use your finger to kind of like push it back. Donna Jordan does the same exact thing for anybody that's curious. I heat it and steam it. And I'll probably have to trim all these, but we'll see if they all come out the same size or not. Sometimes uh, we're going to do Missouri Stars way. Heat it and roll it back. It works good that, that, that way too. Oh my God, I can't even talk. Um, yeah, I just kind of roll them back. I've never really had a problem with the stretching and bowing. Some people have, but I haven't. Not that I can remember, at least. These are the ones I finger pressed. That's why they're going pretty nicely. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Good night, Gwen. Battery is going out, huh? That happens. Pretty sure this one, oh, that's at 72%, so that's good. Let's see what this one's at, because it's really not charging at the same time. Oh, it's at 69. That's okay. All right, so I'm just going to keep doing this over and over until it's done. See, so this is, I do have to say on this, this is not a normal thing. For those of you who are new to quilting and you're new to color choices, I'm going to hold this up. There's no contrast here, even though CJ doesn't really care. There's no contrast between these two. So it looks from far away, you can't even tell. So up close, as you can see, it's almost the same color. This one has a green and a blue and some purple, but... It is literally the same thing. So I would not suggest blending those kind of colors together, really, really darks with really, really darks, because there's no contrast. And if you're trying to go for something, you know, pleasing to the eye, you want more contrast than that. I'm just folding and rolling these back, by the way all towards that blue. 
Just throw them out of the way. I don't care if they're in a good order or not because I'm going to be moving them around anyway and mismatching and having fun with it. See, CJ could have been in here pressing all this for me. All this would have went so much faster. Okay, iron is losing its heat. Put it back on the charger. So sometimes when I'm letting it charge, since I realize that now I have to charge the iron, I sometimes will fold these back like this with my fingers. Just a bunch of them while the iron charges back up. Just use my fingers to kind of roll them back because the surface is warm. And that way all I have to do is press them while they're kind of open already just by using my fingers. The video seems extra clear tonight, guys. Is it really extra clear for you? Seems more HD quality. I'm literally watching it in like an HD quality. Okay, so this should be heated up enough. Let's start back over. You know, they all seem about the same size while I'm pressing them. So I don't think I'm going to trim them. I don't even think I'm going to trim the dog ears off. You know why? Because Cyrus said he didn't care. <laughs> and those that are new to quilting the dog ears are ah, these little corner pieces that stick up like that. Those are the dog ears. Most people chop them off. I'm probably just going to leave them there. It looks great, very clear. Why can't anything else be this clear? Sometimes I have real big issues. It must be my internet working really good tonight or something. Because sometimes my videos aren't very clear. Even though these two colors don't have much contrast, it really looks cool. I don't know if you can tell because of my lighting behind it, but I think it really looks awesome. Even though that's still too strong, but it's pulling the blues from this and the greens. Oh, with that light, it's almost see-through. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> you guys all still here with me? Everybody still here? Hanging out? Or is everybody falling asleep? You know, I could start sewing this together if I can get all these pressed really quick. Okay, well, I know you're still here, Kim. Anybody else? Still awake, still here, hanging out? If you're still here, say hi. <laughs> if you're falling asleep, then you can watch it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, time to charge some more. It takes about a minute and 45 seconds or so. That's how much I timed it the other day. This little area is still nice and warm though, so you can just stick the blocks on it. All right, BJ's still here. Karen's out. Good night, everyone. Okay, Karen, good night. It's going to be really pretty. I think so. I think it'll be nice. It's going to be random, that's for sure. A quilt is a quilt though. Since I use the same background color for everything, I think that's what will help it blend together whatever comes of it at least. 
Marlene still here. We got Shirley. Hi, Shirley. I'm trying to see how far I can get in one video on my son's quilt. This blue and this red look really good together. Definitely look good together. And then there's the blue. Instead of that dark red, there's also a pink. I think those look good together. I guess Cyrus did a good job of choosing his colors. There's so many here to press, guys. Hi. How many of you chain piece, chain cut, chain press like I do? Does anybody else do this where you just kind of do every step all at once instead of one step at a time? Like, you know, like sitting at the sewing machine, make one part of the block, trim it, sew it to the next part of the block, trim it. You know what I mean? Like how many of you actually go through and do just like I'm doing, you know, all the sewing first, then all the cutting, and then all the pressing. And if you are watching this later, let me know how that is working for you. If you do do it, I think this saves me quite a bit of time, honestly, because there's over 200 half square triangles here. And I'm at hour two and what, 20 minutes for 200 blocks. And I did talk the whole entire time. So we're at two hours and 29 minutes. So yeah. And I've been talking and stopping and talking and stopping. So And I know most of you cut the dog ears off, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to leave them on. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with them. Hopefully. Sometimes I do. If I was on the brother, they get stuck down in the machine. The little corners. I chain piece a lot and also iron that way on occasion. Yeah, I do it this way every time. I like that I have a bigger board. When I had the smaller board, I couldn't do as much, especially big blocks, couldn't do big blocks because there wasn't enough space. I'm starting to get sweaty with this iron on. Whew. It's getting hot in here, but I can't take off all my clothes. <laughs> I know I'm silly, guys. You know, you guys can ask me questions about stuff. I don't really care. My life, you know, anything quilting related, sewing related, whatever. Curious about something? Ask. I don't mind. I'm a very open person.
How are you liking it? I like it. The only thing is, is the whole, I can only go for so long and then I have to stop and put it on the charger. It's like a, a minute and 45 seconds about so far because we timed it the other day. And then I have to put it on the charger. If I keep the area heated up like this though and use the steam, it keeps the iron. See now it's not as hot. But that's why I can take that break and it only needs to sit on the little charging port for like, you know, another minute or so. While this area is warm, I can press these back like this. So, I mean, I like it. It's convenient, definitely. I, I really struggled having a cord. That's for sure. It was always getting tangled up, and especially on the floor. And being cordless is really good. So, I really appreciate that Teresa sent me this iron. It was definitely a surprise. I was not expecting it. Usually, people tell me things before they say, like, Hey, there's a package on the way. She didn't tell me at all. It was a complete surprise. Um, so yeah, it was like my my birthday in February. <laughs> Even though my birthday is in November or March. Did I get it this month? I did get it this month, huh? Ah, yeah, I did get it. So my birthday in March was like a birthday present for my own birthday, or just because I loved. It was probably that though, just because I loved. Looking through a thread a couple days ago, I found Spool 48 Rayon, that's variegated. Is that good to piece with? Rayon? I don't think so for rayon um, piecing. Unless you're piecing um, like a... What's that? Uh, hold on, hold on. I gotta think of the name of this material. rayon thread is good for stuff like this. This is that, um, I don't know what it's called, it's for especially. Um, I'm not sure if you run rayon through a serger or not. Um, I wouldn't, but it's definitely for this kind of fabric. Where'd that pin go? I don't want to poke myself when I put it away. Um, so it's like for stuff like this. It's very thin. It's for like skirts, t-shirts, so on and so forth, so far that I've learned, because I have a couple spools of rayon that I have not used for cotton. I think it tears the cotton, honestly, kind of like some polyester threads are like a, like a 50 weight polyester or 60 weight polyester for piecing. If you use a tight stitch length, you can actually put little tears between holes on the tight stitch length and it can actually perforate it so much that you can actually just tear the end off. So you got to watch with your threads. Um, that's why I use poly wrapped cotton or cotton um, coated poly, you know what I mean? Like those kind of blends, but rayon, I think you got to stick to that with clothes, clothing or uh, stuff like that. I mean, you can use it just to get it over with. If you're making like face masks or something or things like that, I would say use it. But it's definitely for this kind of clothing material. I don't know the name of the fabric. It's wrinkly. It's definitely like a like scarf almost type. Let's see, I have a ton of it. I was planning on making some skirts, which I have a thingy for pattern that I haven't gotten to make in the videos yet because I don't really have don't really know how to make clothes. Huh? Oh. But I do have clothing fabric and I would like to make stuff but I wouldn't suggest it. You can ask someone else. Ask someone else. Maybe someone else has used it and it's good. But I don't I wouldn't honestly. Oops, you see what I just did there? I folded it wrong. So I was trying to read. I have the same iron and color and love it. That's awesome, BJ. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely loving it because I don't like being attached to a cord, that's for sure. It was given to me, so I don't know. Yeah, I have tons of different threads. I even have um, you know that see-through thread? Supposedly you can use it for quilting but I haven't yet. I, it's kind of, 
I'm going to try to do this while the video is on. So I have all this. Um, these are my randoms. Some of them have what they are on them. Okay, so for quilting, I use this a lot. Cotton wrapped polyester. I don't know how well you guys can see that. This is probably an older spool. A lot of my threads are old, but um, I use cotton wrapped polyester or polyester wrapped cotton all the time. Um, I prefer to piece with it. It is very dusty though, linty, very, very linty. Um, all purpose threads that look like this, guys. All purpose dual duties. They are great for everything because it's mercenized cotton converted polyester. So it's a blend of both. Definitely, definitely good. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Um, all purpose works just great. Um, hold on. I do recommend cotton coated poly. That's what my big huge spools are again. Um, I do recommend that the most. Uh, where is it at? It's somewhere in here. It's somewhere right here. Where is it at? I do not use any of this kind of stuff. I'm going to hold this close to the camera. Can you see? This is sparkly thread. I have not run this through the machine. Oh, and there's a name on it. It is metallic decorative. I will not. I need to try this someday. Oops, focus. There we go. Someday I will try this stuff. I haven't yet. I don't know if it's going to run through the machine. It feels weird. So, I don't know. Someday I'll try it. Just to see if it, you know, maybe on a bag, give it a little flare in the last and final quilting stitches. I'll see, here's more of it. This one's the, the silver color, so I have silver and gold. Um, where is that stuff at? It's rayon something. I have it in here. Anyway. I'm trying to find it. I'm wasting time here. All I have to say is I prefer cotton wrapped poly or poly wrapped cotton for those that are curious. Um, twist? I don't, know. I don't even know where my see through is. It was in here. I have some of that see through stuff, but I'm afraid to use it because it feels almost stretchy. But I use a lot of coats. Most of these are coats brand. Anyway, that's what that all is. I do have, where's that? I think I'll show you this real quick in between all my ironing. Okay, here's something that's totally weird. That's not weird. Some of you guys do this. I collect old thread. Okay. So these, I don't know if I can, let's just take the camera down to it. I collect old thread. Why? Because I can't. Spools? I love the wooden spools. See? This is like some kind of nylon stuff. It's very weird. It's pretty thick. You can see how thick that is. I like these things. I'm not going to ever use them. They're like probably really, really, really old. Let's see. It's made in the USA. Doesn't have a year though. I'm trying to show the names. But look at all these little. Buildings. Look at these cute little wooden spools. Pretty cool, huh? 
I like these little things. It's very rare that I find them, but I've been collecting them. And then I also have these little guys in here too. These are on styrofoam. Isn't that just the cutest little styrofoam thing? <laughs> Some of you guys probably collect these. I don't know. I do. And then I have these ones. They're like a metal spool. They're in meters. I can't even pronounce the word. So I started getting these. Like some of these, they all came together. So I got all these from like the same person. For like a dollar, you know. So this whole row right here, from this to here, I paid like a dollar for all that. And then here's all the ones that are in the styrofoam in a nice row, but I kind of just moved them accidentally. <laughs> They'll go back in their row. And then I have all my little wooden ones. They were in order by lilies. I have a ton of little lilies. Let's see. Aren't these just adorable? Look at like that's how tiny it is. So cute. So yeah, these are my little thread things. I don't really collect much, but these are awesome. So they stay in that box. Okay, let me put this back down. And we'll put this back up on the shelf real quick. I forgot to put my reusable bobbins back inside the drawer. I have not tried them yet. They were from, um, oh my God, now I can't remember. Connecting threads. No, not connecting threads. From... Oh my god, I can't remember now. I forgot. Wherever I got it. Probably connecting to this. That's what I was thinking. It's cute. It was given to me, so I don't know. It's good for fancy beading when you want stitches to show. I use variegated rayon metallic threads for machine embroidery and monofilament thread. That's what it's called, monofil. I don't know why where it is. It's in there somewhere. Um, I haven't tried it yet though. Uh, the wooden spools are antique, valuable for crafting. I love the wooden spools; they're a great keepsake. I have a small collection of old spools as well. I have some wooden spool ones that belong to my great grandmother over hundred. I don't even know how old. I know the building ones. Um, I think I looked it up. And they were like 1950s, so, and it's already 2020, so they're pretty darn old. Um, and then I like these. These are all, and they come wrapped so they don't come apart. So these, oops, these are hard to use on the long arm. Let me pull one up. These are hard to use on the long arm. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. See that? So I have lots of colors. I get these on Wish. They come just like this in a little wrapper. And I get like six of them for a dollar. And these are amazing. When I did my daughter's purse and I quilted it, this is the one color I used. So you get like six of these for a freaking dollar. I mean, come on now. It's just a random um, company. But it can't beat the price. I mean, that's how much is on them. I didn't even use a full spool when I did my daughter's bag. So when I quilted it. So I get these. And I go through these a lot because I like using the variegated when I first started using, when I first started quilting, these were some of the first things that I was purchasing was the variegated. And then I have some out at the long arm. I have some variegated thread out there. I haven't used, no, I did use the one. It made a disaster. It was a cotton, a 100% cotton. And it was, oh my God. It made my bobbin casing area get stuck so many times because it was so full. Oh, it was crazy. All right, let's get to these. Get these freaking done. I'm wasting time here. We got on a thread subject. 
but now you guys know that I actually collect old thread. I also have some old parts for um, sewing machines, for Singer sewing machines. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I was thinking about like selling them or something because I don't know how to use them. And I don't have a Singer machine, so I don't know what to do with them, but they're up on a shelf. How many of you are still here with me? Still in a good position? Okay. I didn't see the time. We're at 2.46. I'll go to three hours and then be done. I don't I don't know if you guys want to keep watching me all night long. It's already, what's today, Saturday? Because it was Friday, so it's now Saturday in the middle of the night. Marlene's here. Surely has a collection of old spools. Okay, I read those. <sighs> you guys, this is a long process. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously. I'm trying to just get these ready. The warmth of the table is going away. <laughs> See if I can't do all this. Ready? Bam, 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 bam. Let's see how those went. That looks pretty straight to me. Pretty straight to me. Oh yeah, that works too. Uh -huh. As long as they're stacked like that at an angle, they should all press nicely. Let's try that again. Start up here. Lay it out. BJ's still here. Is my video behind or lagging or something? Because I did ask that quite a while back. Unless you guys are just reminding me that you're still here. Which is awesome because I like hanging out. You guys got to bring up a topic though. And not COVID-19. Please. Bring up a topic. Bring up a topic. You can kind of see right here the, the sneak quilt that I wasn't allowed to show. I still not allowed to. I need to freaking find a backing fabric for it. And I can't find anything online and it really sucks. Alright, let's make sure all these hold it back nicely. Here's the problem. I need some water in here. is my quilting life so I'm allowed to like just do random talk random tell you about my life tell you about the things going on somebody has to start a conversation because I'm not really good with picking a subject while I'm pressing by the way this pressing idea right here stacking them like this it's actually working so I'm just like putting some back Pressing like this in one big solid go, and then I check them to make sure that they all fold it back right. So far, they are. Look at that. How long have you owned your Jiggy? Uh, what year is this? 20, 19, 18. So I bought it in 2017, right before my birthday, so two and a half years. 
yeah, two and a half years. I love it. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade it in if that makes any sense for anything else. I would though, in the future, want an embroidery machine or something and or, okay, don't know why, but I want a serger. I want to be able to make clothes and I was told a serger is probably the more better way, more better, ah, that sounds funny, to make clothing. And Walmart sells one, but my husband's going to say no because I technically would rather have an embroidery machine because of the quilting, but the embroidery machine will only be used to make tags. So it's like, I can't make up my mind. I make tags for my brother already, but they're just kind of boring and dull, you know? I want to spice things up. And with the embroidery machine, I can also make quilts with embroidery in them. But a serger, I can finally start making clothes. And um, yeah, I would really like to, I have so many ideas on clothing and I would really like to just make them. I just don't know how because on a regular machine, the fabric stretches weird and I have so many issues. Every time I've made anything, it's just annoying, honestly. But yeah, I've had the machine for two and a half ish, two and a half ish years, and I love it. I've tried other machines at quilt shows, at friends' houses, um, at least the industri semi-industrial type. It does not, though. There is one thing about the Juki that uh, I can say, because I've owned it and had the issue, is it does not work on a frame. I don't care how many people think that they're going to buy a Juki and they're going to buy a long arm frame to go with it. No, mm -mm. not with the Juki, not with the T. L 2010Q. It is, it's just nothing but a hassle, uh, a disaster. Um, if you were going to do that and pay that kind of money, I would just go ahead and buy a used handy quilter or something because it's just a waste of money to buy the machine or a frame for the machine. The machine is so much better for sit down quilting, moving under the needle instead of moving the machine over the fabric. Oops, I just did a boo boo. So yeah, I've had it for a while. I purchased mine in 2018 in a Juki serger at the same time. See, and the serger makes clothing and all sorts of these stuff, right? What all can you do on it? You can hem clothes and stuff with the serger. I'm curious now because I kind of want an embroidery machine and a surgery. I almost bought a real industrial machine. It was a, a con concord con conor c o n o r c concord. I don't know whatever it was. It was a big industrial machine, and it had a big huge belt on the side towards the bottom, and like a motor thing and everything. Uh, it was kind of cool. Had a built-in knee lift and a big, huge foot pedally thing. It's Concord. Maybe it was Concord. I don't know. But I almost got it. It was on at a garage sale, but Scott said, nope. Where are you going to put it? <laughs> so sometimes I have to pass those kind of things up. But it's not like I really make a lot of purses, and I haven't tried vinyl purses yet. Um, I haven't. I went to Hobby Lobby, and they have a couple things that are vinyl. But I don't know how much to get. I don't know how much, you know, like certain things to make my vinyl, make one of my bags in vinyl yet, you know, because I might have to change the measurements due to the fact that vinyl needs to be trimmed down in the seams. So I'm totally unaware of how to do that just yet. So I don't need that. And that's an industrial until I at least try it on my Juki to make a bag with the vinyl. But I want to. So I don't really need an industrial until I know that I'm doing it. Because my bags actually have been selling. My quilts haven't. My bags have. Some of the videos that I've made, and some people have already come to me to make custom bags, things that I've been doing off screen. It's crazy. 
So I guess my bags are, especially the funky messenger bag. That was a popular one. I have another one actually to make. All the stuff is ready for me to make it. I just need to make it. Actually, I can do it in a regular video. Let's see if I can do it in less time than my first one, which took like four hours. Oops, that's going the wrong way. Look at this pile. It's getting smaller. That's all I have left. <laughs> okay, let's see. And I purchased mine 2018. So just okay. I have a sewing embroidery machine and use it for everything, even heavy fabrics like denim and upholstery stuff works beautifully. Which machine? She has the Viking Topaz. I love it. I use my serger to finish edges on woven fabrics and sew knit fabrics, and I make log cabin quilts with it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I want it because. Isn't this what a surged seam is right here? Connecting these on a sweatshirt, right? This is a surged seam, right? I wanted to be able to do this kind of thing because then it, I could have my own homemade because this is a surged seam, right? This isn't done on a home sewing machine. So I want to be able to take the fabrics that I have. I have tons of stretchy and all sorts of fabrics and on the brother, they just don't sew properly and then the juki is just a straight stitch so i usually do um when i'm hemming my clothes i do a, a a french seam i'll sew it down the outside and then i'll come back from the inside and fold it in but then sometimes the seam seems too thick down the sides because i have to take a lot of clothes in because i am short very short <laughs> so most pants they sell are for women that are like five seven five eight i'm you know five two so it makes it a lot of things need to be hemmed and I, every time i try to hem even yoga pants from the brother machine or the juki it just bunches up and makes a mess you know i think it'd be easier if i had a surgery then i could just do it and be done we'll work it up machine has three Edge finish stitches. I have to look it up. Um, I need one to make beautiful labels. The Viking does that. It's because the Viking is embroidery, right? Trying to read the comments when they come in. I am sweating so much that I cannot take my sweatshirt off. <laughs> because of my clothing underneath is my pajamas. about with my sweater you mean like that kind of finish okay that really needs to be recharged oh wait that's not hot at all yes okay hold on yes and use a cover stitch machine to make hems like the in sewing industry and she protecting it right yes oh so I can finish clothing on your machine, that, that your kind of machine, Kim, with this kind of finish on the insides, because then it would be nice and clean like. Um, I don't have any other clothing in here for an example. My t-shirts, you know how t-shirts have a double stitch? I don't know how that's, excuse me, I have hiccups, it keeps happening. I don't even know how that's done. Um, it confuses me. That's why I haven't made any shirts or anything yet, but I really want to, especially tank tops. I have tons and tons of fabric I bought to make tank tops, and I have yet to um, make them because my machine sucks. 
because where I live, I require tank tops, lots of them. And you guys have probably seen a couple summers up now of me being on YouTube. You've seen that I do tend to wear a lot of tank tops in the summer. Huh. See, I need a different machine other than my brother. Scott will say, no, we don't have the money for that. And I know he's never going to watch this video, so it's okay for me to whine that he won't let me do things because we don't have the money. He'll say, well, sell the quilts that you're quilting. That's my main problem. If I can sell those quilts, then he'll be like, oh, yeah, you want a new machine? You got it. <laughs> so I got to get the sellings and stuff. You know, I do get customers for custom quilts, but it's not emptying my closet of all the quilts I have already made for my YouTube videos because I have not made any money on YouTube yet. I mean, it says I have, but I've never, I've not been able to cash it out because I'm not at $100. So it's kind of pointless just sitting there. Can't have the money, so it doesn't exist really yet. Not yet, you know. Uh, two years ago, I made my grandkids t-shirts and short sets, all interlock knits, finished, looked professional. That double stitch is made with a cover stitch machine. Okay, so hold on. on regular t-shirts like this, this is what you're talking about. So this is a cover stitch around these edges. Like, see, I'm learning this stitch. What does it cut it or something as it goes to get it straight like that on the inside? Oh my God, focus, you stupid thing. Okay, so now that it's focused. So this kind of stitch with the two stitch lines like that. Well, is this one a single? Oh no, there's double. It's two there. It's one's on top. It's just... There we go. This is what I want to be able to do. Because I like to make um, maxi dresses and stuff. And I don't know how to do any of this collar work yet. I want to learn so that it looks nice and clean. But I'll, I'll figure it out. I have the fabric to do this though. I have the I got the fabric to do collars and shirts um, to make tank tops, not long sleeves. Sleeves on a tank top still have this, you know, but just around the edge right here. And then it'll have a neck piece. So I bought all the fabric to do these things to make tank tops, but I don't, my machine won't do it. And I used to take I used to take all my big t-shirts like that and turn them into tank tops, but every time I go to sew them, they look horrible. So I just leave them raw. You guys have seen me wear my, I cut the necks off because I don't like collars on shirts. I cut the necks off. I can't fix them. I can't sew them because it looks stupid. You know, the sewing machine like makes a mess of it when I use the brother. And I know the brother probably has the correct stitch, but I don't do clothing. I do quilts. So I'm not sure. Maybe one of you guys can teach me. Because I need to learn. I have so many things I want to make. I have all that fabric on those two bottom shelves over there. Just wasting away. And I have tons of patterns. Of things I want to make. Which I can't get to the box. But I'd show you if I could. Um, there's some things that I bought that I want to make. And I don't know how to do it. Because I don't have the right machine probably. So it's a special machine for a cover stitch. Hey. I think I reached three hours by now. And I'm taking my sweet orse time. Notice I didn't say the bad word. <laughs> sweet orse time. Charge it. I got like eight more pieces to do. Let's lay these out on the heat area. Like this. That's why I haven't done, um, back to that subject, that's why I haven't done videos on any kind of patterns yet, because 
I don't know how to do that kind of stuff, especially on my little brother machine. Like I said, I've tried and it just comes out super absolutely horrible. I've made a mess every time. And I have showed you guys uh, when I went to my garage, I showed you my first uh, jumpsuit that I made and my rockabilly dress, just horrible. And I did make a maxi dress that came out horrible too. Because I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, I guess. And it was all me just creating uh, like I do with quilting, you know, no pattern, just going off of what I know what a dress looks like, I guess. All right, this is the last of these. Now to lay them out, mess them up, and have fun. I think I'm going to chain piece the lot of them all into something. So here is my nicely pressed stack now. Oh, that took forever. I'm going to take this over here. We're going to turn the camera. Let's see, I'm at three hours now. Right there. Let's see, can you see over there? Right there. Okay. I'm going to turn the iron off. Turn this off. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to be a good position. No stitch made the color stitch on the machine is okay. You can do the cheater way by sewing with a twin needle on your regular sewing machine with the double stitch book. You have to use two spools of thread. Mine will do overlap. I have twin needles and I have used them on the brother, but it doesn't come out correctly. It's I don't know if it's the fabric that's pulling funny, like stretch fabric, like um that I wanted to make the dresses out of, it pulls and it like, I don't know, it causes ripples and it looks absolutely retarded. I will figure it out someday, obviously, but oops, I bent that piece. Um, yeah, someday I'll figure it out. All right, let's carefully bring this over here. It's been three hours. Um, All right. So I'm curious because it's been three hours. Should I stay on for those that are still here? Let me know um, because I can get off and then I can just continue this in another episode. Um, my brain isn't tired. My body is. And I know a lot of you are, but there's only 13 of you here. So I mean, it's no big deal if I go. I'm going to mess with these while I'm talking now. Um, Kind of thinking I'm gonna mess these up because I need to like make a couple stacks and then swap things around. Let's spread it all out and go like this, that, like that, 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 that. Take that back out, put that there, <laughs> take that back out, swap that there. All right, so this is what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. One, two, three. I have no idea what's falling over here. I'm going to do four. I need a blowery one. Let's do this baby blue right here. Six. Mm. Let's go with right here. No, I already have a black in there. I already have a dark green in there. We already have an orange. Let's go with this green. And um, this darker pink, which we're going to swap that. No, that's too dark. We're going to swap that for this and that. There we go. That seems blended enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a ton of blocks like this, right? I'm hoping that the camera sees that. Let's tip it just a little. 
Okay. So I don't really care how they're going to land, honestly, as long as two of the same are not next to each other, like this. So I'm hoping you can see that. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't in the camera frame. Okay. So this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to make these sticks. <clears throat> years ago, I taught a garment. Years ago, I taught garment sewing and stretch and sew patterns. I have a serger and a three fast sewing machine. Oh, I'm good, guys. My brain is going 100 miles an hour. It's my body that's not. But I need to get this at least laid out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start stacking them like I used to. So, I'm going to take this is going to be the layout, but I'm going to swap another one, a different direction, and a different direction, and a different direction. So there will be four sets that are like this, put together, creating, I don't know, whatever happens, happens. So I'm just going to put these in stacks so that I can chain piece the whole lot of everything when I finally get to it. Um, probably tomorrow night or whatever. I don't want two of the same colors and everything. Oh, this is how I'm going to sew things. Um, let's put this green one. I'm just going to make sure that every pile has the same exact amount of stuff in it. Uh, just digging, grabbing, adding. Huh? So some of them might be almost the same in that stack, but that's okay. So now there's two in each pile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep stacking them all up like this. Okay. So let's just put one here. Two. Three. That one's already brown on that one, so let's put this one. So that's three in that pile now. Um, three in this pile. So this is how I do things for those of you who are new to my channel. Three in that pile. I tend to chain stack everything. Um, it works out really amazing. So now there's three in this pile. And I just keep going as I add over and over in this pile, I'll stack them all exactly the same way. And that pile. So I'm just going to keep going and going and going until I have all of my pieces stacked up. So this will make the fourth one in each of these piles. I did not trim the dog ears. Why? Because there's no need to the way I'm putting this together. Um, so I'm just going to have fun with it in no particular order or direction. Just putting them all this way, obviously. Um, try not to have two of the same ones per. It's kind of hard to remember what row I'm in sometimes. Put that one there and this one here. So there would be the next row. So you guys kind of get what I'm doing here. I don't know exactly how many pieces I'm going to need for everything, but this is how I'm doing it. Because there's over 200 pieces here. So I'm just going to stack a stack a stack and keep going. Moving them around, grabbing what I can so that all of it is blended. BJ says, surely I use the sewing stretches and patterns all the time. I would they didn't use that thin tissue paper. I guess here, let me stack all these up and I'll show you guys the patterns that I have that I really would like to make if I ever get, you know, the proper way to make them. Because honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, 
and one more in this pile. Let's grab that brown. Okay, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. So let me take a step away from this and then show you guys the things that I would like to sew um, for myself if I ever get to sewing. So I'm going to bring this over here. Camera up. Turn it around. You guys are going to watch me dig up there. I'm going up to that right there. Carefully. I'm going carefully to it. Okay. Due to where I live, I like dresses and tank tops. And phones that don't fall. <laughs> oh, sorry guys, that's like the fourth time this has happened. Hey, it's annoying, honestly. Alright. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to show you guys what I wanna wanna do in the future. Because I don't really make clothes, but I would like to, if that makes any sense. Alright. I have this pattern for tank top dresses, like uh, strap dresses, and or around the neck. I like this kind right here, the v-neck, you know, and or the low with the ruffle. And I don't know if these are zooming because of the whole, the auto zoom is supposed to be on. So I kind of want to make these kinds with the ruffle and these at the v-neck. I really, I just like tank tops. So here's another one for tank tops and dresses. Like, I don't know how to do this, but I got the fabric to do these kind of things. And I don't know how. Um, I really like these. I would wear these to bed. This is an old, old, old pattern. I found this at a garage sale. And it's like a full piece <laughs> so so awesome and then I really 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 want to make these they're corset looking type deals so look at that isn't that so adorable and you can make the skirts or a pant set to go with it but it's like a corset I don't know if it's going to work for my size though because it says size for juniors but my my bust is not a junior <laughs> but isn't it adorable that I want to make those and then where is my other one Put up here there. oh look I have a bag bag pattern actually I should make this we should do this one I'm gonna leave that out okay so here's more tank tops and stuff I want to make And skirts and pants, like pajama pants. I love these kind of pajama pants. You know, I sleep in those. But I don't mind the skirt patterns. I would wear all this kind of stuff. I don't know how to make any of it, but I would wear it. And then I have... That's it. I have all these, like, baby quilt patterns to make like the whole entire set for a, a like a crib set or whatever um and then i also like these kind of uh jumpsuit type shirts i don't know what that's called but i actually like those i would so wear just like it's a tunic maybe is it called a tunic maybe i don't know but i like it i would wear that Especially this kind. I would wear this one over a, a tank top if it gets chilly at night in the summertime. You know, when I get the chills, I would wear that. So yeah, I want to do all this someday. And I have this bag pattern, so I think I'm going to do this soon. I've never made a pattern like this before from one of these. Uh, I tried to with Alexa, but it never worked out, so... I'm going to make a bag. So I'm going to keep that out. But yeah, I want to do all that, but nobody's here to show me how. Hmm. 
So that's what I'm doing. That's what I want to do. I have another pattern I bought recently and I showed you guys, but I don't remember where I stuck it. My patterns are all um, on that shelf right here. But that's mainly quilting related, so whatever. Any hoo ha. Um, let's see. I'm going to take this off here so I can read. Jersey uh, days. That's okay. I used to make all my clothes, my girls, my husband's bras, panties, suits. I've made underwear. I don't know if I showed you guys, but I have made underwear. I've made two pairs of underwear. They didn't turn out right. And I used double needle stitch and everything, and they didn't turn out right. <coughs> stretch and sew or use multi size if you need any help sewing knits, just ask. Well, too bad you weren't here, Shirley. That would be so awesome because then I could have help learning how to do it. Behind that chair is all of my clothing stuff that I bought to make clothing and haven't because I still can't figure it out. I don't have the, maybe it's the courage. I don't have enough courage to make it yet. To cut, I don't know if I have to cut the pattern out and pen it or I, you know, I've seen people do those things, but I'm lost. And then obviously using my sewing machine sucks. I make all my pajama pants. See, I've made plenty of pajama pants. They're sloppy. They're really sloppy. But I just use my previous pajama pants as the pattern. Um, a lot of my fuzzy pants that you guys see, those are me just throwing fuzzy pants together because I have tons of, uh, what is it called? Fleece over there hiding in that corner. There's fleece. So, I mean, I have fun with that. So, um, I'm going to get off of this episode 33 of the Insomniac Quilting. I am going to just later on, when I feel like it, I'll come and stack the rest of these into my pile. I'm not going to sew them until the next episode, which will be 34. Um, I really need to go through all my episodes and link in the description to each episode that goes with a specific topic, I guess. I don't know. There's writing in them. I mean, I just put them that way so that I get people to watch them because you're curious of what's in that episode, you know? That's the only reason why I do it this way. Anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, anyone else can pick my brain as well. Okay, Shirley. Glad, you, glad that you are offering your experience because that's a good thing. Um, take classes. Uh, I don't have the money to take classes. That's why I bought the patterns because I figured I could do it myself and watch videos on YouTube. But when I type in the pattern name on YouTube, it doesn't really bring me to something. So, so there's some of them are old patterns. Uh, I used to take stitch and sew the stores years ago. There's my first yawn. Okay, it's time to go. My first yawn has hit. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys watching, and I think I need to tap the screen to zoom in. There we go. Focus. It's got to focus. Um, what was I going to say? If you are new to my channel, I hope you like that this is my real life, and my videos are long, and I don't give a crap what you think, because I'm having fun, and I enjoy teaching you, showing you, learning, learning for me at the same time talking with you guys and uh yeah uh just subscribe like share i don't really think you have to share these kind of videos but um you can share my channel that's one thing you can do um and if you're curious about doing that for those that are new see this right here all this on this main page right here well if you go to tiffany's live here you can like share it with for you guys it'll be three buttons right here i think something like that oh no it's right here at the top of the screen share yep there share channel and you can share the channel with whatever this is because this is a ipad so i don't really know much about ipads but all right let me turn this screen around because i can't turn it off if i can't see it all right guys Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time we all can't sleep, and or Sunday, because Sunday's coming soon. So, bye everyone.